This is the Power Up Team America podcast, and today we've got a preview show for the Junior and Sub-Junior National Championships with experts Sam Sikora, Julia Williams, and Mike Gold giving picks and analysis for every weight class. This year, Junior and Sub-Junior Nationals is special because it's the third and final event of the year for these age classes after high school and university nationals earlier this year. So this is where the athletes will have their final say in making a bid for a coveted spot on one of the U.S. national teams. Who will show out and punch their ticket to the World Championships in Romania or the North American Championships in the Cayman Islands? Find out starting June 2nd in Scottsdale, Arizona. We'll post the links to the live stream on our Instagram story at powerlifting underscore America, so make sure you follow us there. Thank you to SBD and Aleko for their continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug tests of powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting-america.com and become a member. Now with that, let's get to this preview show for junior and sub-junior nationals. What's up? We're here with the gang. We got them all together. We're talking about the finale of the juniors and sub-junior season, sub-junior, junior, and nationals in Scottsdale, Arizona. And um, I got with me Julia Williams, Sam Sakura, and Mike Gold. What's up, everybody? That's all. So this is the finale of the season. This is the one we've all been waiting for. This is how the national teams are going to be selected to go to the IPF Worlds in Romania and also the IPF uh, North American Championships in the Cayman Islands. So we're not going to go through all the rules, like how exactly you make it onto the national team and all of that, but we will have an interview with one of the coaches of the U.S. national team, um, if you want to go that all that information is on the website, if you go to the athletes tab, then national teams, and then you can select which national team and all the qualifying criteria to get it onto one of the national teams is all there. So yeah, we'll have a national team coach on for the classic, uh, for, for the classic sub juniors and juniors here in the next week or so. So we'll talk about that. Um, to start with, we're going to jump in and we're just going to get straight into it. We're going to, uh, first thing we're going to do is just talk about all the highlights of this competition for the juniors and sub juniors and the classic side, the raw side only. Um, and then we'll go session by session and, and we'll make some picks and, and whatnot. So to start off with Sam, the one Oh five kilo juggernaut, <laughs> what's the first thing you're looking forward to here, uh, from these sub juniors and juniors? Yeah. Um, I'm probably a little biased cause he's my good friend, but, uh, I'm very excited to see Anthony McNaughton's individual performance in the one Oh fives. I mean, he's obviously going to run away with our class and that's, but Anthony's training's been on fire. He's definitely got a fire lit under him, especially after uh, what happened in last year's junior worlds. And like, I mean, I've never seen him focus like this and training like this, um, even while prepping for like physical fitness tests and, you know, training at like one, 2 AM. Uh, Anthony's getting the work in and he's still performing pretty insanely in the gym. And he's in for a super big meet. I mean, he did 900 um, KG total at the local meet in Buffalo and he's, I'm looking to put up a round or more than that, he probably will total 2K, uh, 105 junior uh, Nats, which is pretty crazy. Um, it's a pretty crazy feat uh, to say is a casual total for him right now. But uh, yeah, super excited to see that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super pumped about that as well. Um, you know, he's got a dream team behind him, John Song. He's got Susie Gary handling him. Um, so he'll have a lot of people in his corner. Everything's set up for him to have a great day. So and like you said, he's going to put up something silly. So that's a good one to pick for sure. One of the highlights of the entire competition, not just in the juniors and sub juniors. Um, all right, Mike, let's go over to you. Okay. So one of the highlights I'm looking forward to is going to be a th great three-way battle in the 83 juniors between Alex Sidor, who's coming back from last year's national team, and the newcomers, Connor Heim and Ken Wynn. Um, I think this battle is going to be the winner will probably be totaling upwards of 740, maybe set, maybe into the 750s. And second and third place will probably also be totaling in the 720s, 730s. I think all of them will be above 720. This will be a phenomenal battle. Alex is coming back from injury with John Song, and he, he recently had like a nice uh, 292 pull, which was probably better than any he's had in a long time. So I think it's going to be a very good battle. And one to look forward to. Yeah, for sure. That's a good one. We got some uh, returning national, uh, you know, national team member and Alex. And so definitely we'll see what he's got going on. Is anyone else here in that echo? All right, good. I think we'll be. Well, we're getting a little bit of an echo. But all right, let's move on over to Julia. Okay. Well, I think the kilo uh, yeah i'm sorry yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we echo here mike i think it's yours mike if you don't mind mute yourself there you go yeah mike something's going on i don't know what it is it must be bouncing back 
It's all right. I'll trim this little spot here. But um, okay. all right, those were good choices there, Mike. Well, let's uh, kick it on over to Julia. Okay, so um, I think my top pick is the sixty-three junior class. Um, it's just you know a, a very deep field, um, and four competitors that are basically um, neck and neck: uh, Daisy, Joy. Um, Sophia and um, Tierra George. Yeah, Tierra George. And I mean, you know, this can go a lot of different ways. Um, there's a, lifters, you know, have a lot of different strengths. I think, you know, Daisy is a huge squat and um, deadlift. Um, I mean, Joy obviously has, you know, a phenomenal bench. Um, and uh, Sophia obviously has um, a squat and deadlift as well. And I just, I think it's really going to come down to who can make their lifts. Um, and, you know, it, I, I think that the 63 class is really, really taking off in the juniors. Yeah, that's an awesome, exciting weight class. Um, shout out, by the way, we've got an interview with Anthony McNaughton already. We've also got an interview with Joy. So if anyone wants to go and listen to further details, how their prep's going, all that kind of stuff, make sure you check that out. Um, all right. So for me, um, my first choice here is the 84 plus sub junior women. This is where we have Luella Bowden and Chelsea Enamore, and both are capable of totaling over 500. Everybody knows Luella Bowden. She won the open division 84 plus at nationals in Austin, put on a huge show, amazing performance for someone so young. And she's capable of going well up into like, you know, 530. She's totaled 550 before. I think with IPF standards, you know, at nationals, you know, she had a little bit of trouble. So 530 was her total there. But um, Chelsea also totaled 500. Her only total in open powerlifting is from high school nationals where she had a super rough day on deadlift where she she basically almost bombed out because she was cramping up on before deadlifts. Um, her training is going great. She recently squatted. 205. It looked like an opener and that's like two and a half kilos above what she did at high school nationals. So that's looking really good. Um, she did a 183 deadlift recently. It's like 10 kilos above what she did at high school nationals, but it looked like a warm up. You know, her training is just looking like super good right now. Um, she, her comp bench, she's been doing that for rep work doubles, her best comp bench. So it's looking like every lift for her is like on the up and up. And she's got a little bit of a gap to make up because her best total is 500 and, and, and certainly Luella's is five. 50, but we know like with sub juniors, they can put a, a lot on their total in a short period of time. Um, so yeah, they both have good coaches that'll have them ready. So I'm very excited to see what they're doing. It's very, it's a very bright future here for the sub junior women. I mean, these are both 17 year old women that are putting up crazy numbers. And as we know, like this class is Bonica Brown's class has been forever. And so I'm just really excited to see that maybe these two women are going to be the future of that weight class, you know, so i um, pumped for that. And then Let's kick it back over to Julia. What's your next thing that you're looking forward to the most? So I think the the 120 junior men, um, it could be a little bit of a, a sleeper battle here. Um, I Although, I mean, Brendan Todd uh, is coming in, um, Tank Strength is coming in with, you know, just a massive total. Um, he recently switched over from USPA to Powerlifting America and actually put kilos on his total, which is... Um, you know, rare going from a 24 hour weigh in and a deadlift bar to a two hour weigh in and a power bar. Um, but he has uh, potentially some competition in tall Harayo. Uh, I don't know how to uh, pronounce that. Sorry if I mispronounce that. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, I haven't really seen him pushing too much, but um, he does have a, also a very high entry total and you know, I think that if uh, Brent doesn't go um, nine for nine, there's, you know, a potential that, that this could come down to deadlifts. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's a good point, especially about coming over with 24 hour weigh ins and all that and still adding to the total. That'll be a massive, he'll probably have a massive performance. All right, I'm going to kick it now back over to Mike. What's your second thing that you're looking forward to? Oh, Mike, you're muted. I'm sorry. Yeah. So um, the second thing I'm looking forward to is the 93s, which is going to be a deep class. We have our returning national team member, Shane Knott, who's going to be the favorite and is looking to go into well into the 800s. Um, he hit like, I believe, 825 or something in a mock meet 
couple months ago. And if he hits around there, that would be well over what won Junior Worlds last year. But beside, in addition to that, we have coming over from the USAPL, we have Aiden Raider, who is looking to push well into the late 700s, maybe even in the 800s. And we also have um, Brandon Combs, coached by uh, Heather Connor, mm-hmm. who's been, his lifting is going really, really well. His deadlift, his deadlift PR in a meet, I believe is like maybe 672, but he just hit 705 this week with a little bit more in the tank. He's going to be pushing probably into the late 700s, maybe the 770, 780 range. And Peyton Johnson as well will also be looking to push into the 760, 770 range. So we're going to have probably at number one by himself and then two, three, four, all in the in the late 700s. Yeah, I mean, that's a great weight class. Shane Nutt is obviously going to be the king of that weight class. And I think like he's going to put up a solo performance that's going to be spectacular up there with Anthony McNaughton. You know, he's a very established lifter. Seems like his training's going good. Um, Sam, you, you've, you're you pretty good friends with him. You got any background information? Like, is his training going well? Is he going to be putting up something oh. big? Um, yeah, it's, it's going well. He'll definitely be putting up a, a big total. Yeah. Yeah. So Shane's a showman, uh, gets hyped and everything like this. Like he's one for sure. Like if you're just going to tune in and watch like one performance, um, his, his one will for sure be one to remember. All right, Sam, what's the next thing you're looking forward to? Yeah. Um, definitely some individual sub junior performances will be super cool to see on the men's side. Um, we got Carlos Hicks coming in as a 83 kilo sub junior, uh, and he's totaling 657 and a half at a local meet recently. And that's within striking distance of the uh, American record total for the 83 sub juniors. So he's definitely going to be putting up a fight for that total. He's just a really all around balanced lifter. Um, so, you know, like some of those like single lift records are maybe not within reach, but that total record is because he's just so uh, put together and all around. He's super young. He's just 16. I think he just turned 16. Uh, he's definitely going to run away with the class. It's looking like and he's definitely going to put on a show, um, especially if he goes all out. Uh, it'll definitely be awesome to see him perform and then, um, you know, try to take a step at that total record. And then um, my athlete, my good friend, 93 kilo, uh, Marcus McFadden, uh, taking on the 93 kilo class for the first time. Uh, no cutting, just eating in the meat. Uh, he's looking to take that American record deadlift in that class. And he probably will run away with the class in terms of total as well. Um, and it'll be awesome to see him put up a really big total PR. Um, he benched like a 66 uh, pound bench PR within eight weeks of his uh, performance at high school Nats. So uh, 93 is treating him well. And he's definitely going to put on a, put on a show at Nats as well. So I think those, some of those sub junior men are definitely lifters to look out for. It'll be fun. Yeah. That's our guy, Marcus McFadden. You know, he's been on the PA podcast before he absolutely balled out at high school nationals. I think he won best lifter. Um, is that right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, just immaculate performance. Like everything was perfect. Everything moved pretty well. Definitely going to build on that total. So I'm, I'm super excited to see Marcus again um, because the man just like does not fail, doesn't miss lifts. <laughs> so he'll put up some numbers uh, for sure. And, yeah. and I'm excited to see what he's done since then, because like I said before, these sub juniors, they add to their totals in a hurry. Like you, mm-hmm. you don't pay attention to what they're doing for four months. He doesn't really post his lifts and stuff. So you, as his coach, you know, what's going on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's <laughs> going to be a spectacular, he's going to put up some big numbers, I think. So, yeah. Um, all right. So for me, the second thing that I had on my list was, uh, the 66 kilo juniors, the men, um, we got Kyle Nowak and Zach Taylor in this weight class. They are both studs. They're both like shredded to the bone. I mean, they look like bodybuilders, like they could just go straight on stage after this. So it'll be curious to see like how the weight cutting um, and everything maybe uh, affects their performance. They both, they're pretty evenly matched as far as best totals. You know, uh, Kyle's got a 630 and uh, Zach's got a 637.5. I know that Kyle, like uh, his performance at IPF Worlds last year, there were a few hiccups. And there were some things, you know, that he definitely wants to come in and rectify and put up, you know, show what he can, re- he's really capable of. I have a feeling, I, I mean, I'm pretty tight with, with uh, Zach, I got to say, um, you know, we, he came to nationals last year. It kind of helped him, you know, make sure that he got into that meet and then everything like that, stayed in contact with him when he was on the world's team and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I just know that he wants to get that bad taste out of his mouth. He doesn't post it to me. It, it looks like he's not really posting his top stuff. Um, and, it, and then I know Kyle seems like he is posting his top stuff. Like he's posting PR singles, um, left and right. His deadlift looks like it's going to be massive. 
Um, there's a question, you know, he pulls with straps a lot in training whatnot. So we'll see how that plays out on the, on the, uh, big national stage there and everything. But as far as like, just like two dudes that just are shredded, uh, you know, to the bone and just like, you know, they're going to put on a show. They're going to, they're going face to face. Um, they post a lot of their stuff. They both got super aesthetic, like Instagram accounts and whatnot. Like they, these are two stars uh, in the making here. And I'll be curious to see, you know, which one of them ends up walking away with it. So that'll be, that's my pick. The other thing I just got to give a special mention is just all the U S national team lifters from last year that are going to be here, you know, like Shane and Anthony and Zach Taylor and Sador and, you know, joy and Carolyn, Carolyn Connor, you know, all these, these athletes like Carolyn Connor, um, she hasn't been posting her training lately, but which might be a sign that she's due for something huge as well, because I know she's, she's was PR and everything left and right. And her totals blowing up fast. Um, Emily and Karen on Tara, Jess, Kenny, all these people that were on our team last year, they're all back. And so, um, we'll, you know, I'm excited to see what the, what our U S national team from last year can do, if they can defend their titles and how that'll go. And of course, just looking forward to, to hanging out with the crew, with, uh, Sam and Rob and, uh, <clears throat> you know, Shane and Anthony and everyone, you know, we'll have a good time at this competition for sure. It's going to be a fun one. Um, all right, so let's go session by session. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to go in the order that the actual competition will unfold. All right. So we're going to go first up day one, uh, Friday it's session one. This is the women 43 kilos through the 63 kilos. And I'm going to pull it up. Let's go ahead and start here with the 43. So for people who don't know, there's an extra weight class in the juniors and sub uh, in the juniors and sub juniors for both men and women. So that's why we have a 43 weight class. Um, so who wants to take this one? Uh, I think Mike will kind of go to you for some of these to start with. Go ahead. So in the 43s, we only have one lifter, Natalie Estrada. Um, interestingly enough, her last competition was in the 52s. So it looks like there's some cutting going on. But other than that, I haven't really seen that much training wise, um, maybe a small PR coming, but, um, I don't know. I don't know that much about this lifter. So. All right. Yeah. All right. And that's, um, uh, we're, go ahead and mute yourself again. Sorry there, Mike. Yeah. We're getting an echo from you. Um, and that's the only one we have in the 43s is a sub junior and that's Natalie Estrada. So there's no, there's no junior 43s. So, all right, let's move on to the 47s. Um, does anyone want to take this one? Go ahead, Mike, you can do it again. Since I know you're, you're ready with the spreadsheets. <laughs> you got to unmute in the, in the 47s. We also only have sub juniors. We have, uh, two sub juniors. We got Trinity, uh, Klingler and we have Lily Falcone. So Lily Falcone is, uh, previously was an equipped lifter. She had very, very strong equipped lifts. She's now moving over to raw. I believe she did one raw meet, but has done a plenty of uh, equipped meets. Um, she has a pretty big squat for a 47. Um, not, not 300 pounds, but closing in towards 300 pounds and a, over 300 pound deadlift as well. Um, she's going to be pretty impressive and probably will be totaling in the 320, 330 maybe range, which is for a 47 sub junior, very, very impressive. All right. That's good. Good notes there, man. Mike, you're carrying us on this. Anyone have anything they want to add to this? Well, I can take the 52s if you want. <laughs> All right. Let's jump in the 52s. Go ahead, uh, Julia, start us off. So we have uh, Emma Klein coming in um, and she's, she's only 14. Um, and she's already totaling around uh, 300 kilos. Um, actually, she's totaled over that. Um, she's totaled 313 in the past, but her entry total will be uh, 295. Um, so, you know, with a lot of these young lifters, um, especially, I mean, she's very young. There's, there's tons of potential here to um, see her put a lot on her total, not just at this competition, but um, moving forward as well. Um, you know, I mean, that, that, those are some big numbers for someone that age. Yeah. That's a sub junior. And then anyone want to talk about this, the junior. Yeah. Um, Madison Shelton is taking over 52 juniors. Um, she's the only competitor. Um, she's putting up a 300 kilo total, which is super solid as a 52 junior. Um, I mean, it's, it's her class. So as long as she walks in and takes that total, yeah. it'll be hers, but yeah. yeah. So we've already got a couple national champions here, you know, uh, <laughs> Natalie Estrada, 
and uh, Madison Shelton. Um, as long as you guys don't bomb out, you're good. You're, you're going to be a champ, national champ. So congrats in advance. All right, let's um, jump on over to the 57s. That's what's up next. Who's got this one? Mike, you got something? Yeah, so in the 57 um, juniors, we have uh, four lifters. We have Emily Menire, who is moving up a weight class. We got Karen Wynn. We got Blair Dunn. And we got Kelsey Scanavan. So um, in this weight class, I believe Kelsey is a pretty – pretty decent favorite. She's coming in with a 367.5 total already and looks to be upping that a little bit. Um, Blair Dunn as well is in the 330 range and training is going well for her as well. So I think that's going to be the one two. And then the other two lifters are also, they're also making quick progress and will also be into the 300s. Yeah, we're talking about fan favorites, Emily and Karen, who were on the U.S. national team last year. They're part of the Marty Agos crew down there in Texas. They're just super good people, super fun to hang with. Um, and then Blair Dunn, that's a surprise because she is actually moving down a weight class. Um, I believe she was registered as a 63, and I'm not sure if she competed previously at 63, but in my head, at least, I had her pegged as a 63. So she must have uh, jumped down. And so, yeah, very interesting to see then it as like, you know, if a 63 lifter will be able to compete with Kelsey there um, for in the 57s, how the cut will treat her. So uh, Julia, do you have something? Go ahead. Yeah, her total, her uh, 332.5 was actually at um, 57. So okay. um, I, I think she, you know, uh, that could actually be a pretty good battle um, depending on, you know, again, made lifts and all of that. Um, but yeah, I think I, I she doesn't have a competition as a 63 um, as for open powerlifting. So um, I think she's just, okay. you know, figured she can make weight and, uh, you know, her strength has, has stayed. So she's going to go for it. Cool. Yeah. So then that, that means that that cut's probably not going to uh, affect her since she's already competed at 57. And if she was thinking about being a 63, that means that she probably, you know, put on some size and might be ready to put up a much bigger total than she has in the past as well. So That'll be interesting. Does anyone have any other comments on the, those weight classes? 57s? All right. Now, here's a loaded one, the 63s, where it's pretty much stacked, both juniors and sub-juniors. Let's get Mike to give us the rundown. Let's start with the sub-juniors. So the 63 sub-juniors is going to be a great class. So to start off, we have Barbara Lopez versus Kennedy Rowan. Those two are both in the mid-300s on their totals. Very impressive. We also got a few more lifters, lifters to round out the sub juniors. We got Maya Brown, we got Giselle Alta Marino, Murano, and we got Natalia Apodaca. So we have a pretty big class for the sub juniors there. But at the top of the class, we're going to be looking into the upper 300s between our two top lifters. I think 365, maybe 370. Somebody's going to put up something really, really big. Yeah. So before you talk about the juniors, let's let's uh, kick this over to the rest of the panel here for um, what you guys think about the 63 sub juniors. Um, just looking at our notes here, having Barbara Lopez 15 years old, two years younger than anyone else in this weight class, um, that's exciting to, that she's also has the highest total coming into this as a 15 year old. So damn, the 63s stay stacked. What do you guys think, um, Sam and Julia? Do you know these lifters, Kennedy and Barbara? Yeah. Um, seeing some of their lifts on Instagram and just seeing their open powerlifting, it's definitely be close. And it's the thing with sub juniors, like their totals are so volatile. Like they could add like, you know, 20, 30 kilos within like a few months, or they could like have a random, like bad meet where they just don't perform because there's not a lot of experience and such. So you never really know what to ex uh, expect. But um, I believe that. Um, uh, Kennedy was eating into the meat and that uh, Barbara was cutting into the meat. So that could definitely be a big factor. And like, you know, eating into a meat, especially as a sub junior is like, basically you're like, I'm, you're of superpowers. So um, yeah. if I had to pick one, I probably would say I have Kennedy winning. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We got to do picks for these battles. When we get these battles, these close battles, you guys got to take a pick. So Sam's going to take Kennedy. Um, Julia, you are a 63. 
yeah. and who's also, you know, could be a 69. So, you know, you have direct experience with this, with the cuts and whatnot. So yeah. yeah what's your take on the sub juniors? Yeah. I mean, I'm always going to take somebody who's eating into the meat. Um, I, mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's, it's very hard, especially with the, um, with being that small. Um, I, I think, you know, with women, a little bit of weight is a lot harder to cut than, you know, especially for small women than for like, you know, bigger women or men. Um, and so I think that being able to eat into the meat, um, is a, a pretty tremendous advantage. Um, I know when uh, Meg Scanlon and I competed in um, November, I think she didn't have to cut at all and she put up like a crazy performance. So yeah, I mean, I'm always gonna take the lifter who's eating to the meat, but um, again, you know, with juniors, um, it can go, it can go any, or sub juniors, it can really go any direction um, and, you know, they can put on strength very quickly. So um, it's going to be really hard to tell. Them. Yeah, yeah. I'm pumped for this weight class and just like, man, these, these young girls are putting up big numbers. 63, stay ready. Uh, Mike, what was your final thoughts on the sub juniors there? Do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I'm going to go against you two and I'm going to go with Barbara Lopez to win this one. She's got a really big squat. I think she's going to jump out to our lead. And I think on deadlift and bench they're they're pretty similar so i think if she can make three squats which will be tough she's not a super experienced lifter and this is a big stage but if she can get three squats in i think it's her meet to win all right all right someone out there in the in the audience take notes and add up the points and see who gets the right picks here um <laughs> i like it we got we got alternative views all right good one there guys um now let's go to the juniors uh, unless anyone else had anything you want to say, sub juniors, uh, let's, let's keep it moving. Let's go to the 63 kilo juniors. Um, you know, we got the superstar in here, joy. We did a whole podcast interview with her. Um, she's amazing. And, but she's got tight, tight battle here. So Mike, why don't you run it down for us real quick? Oh, the 63 juniors is what I believe to be the best, the best class in all of the juniors and sub juniors in this entire meet. We have four legitimate contenders. So we're going to start with last year's 63 from Worlds, Sophia Ayala. And then Joy coming down from the 69s. She's already come down, though, so she's no longer cutting and she's maintaining weight. And her progress has been insane. I mean, everybody, everybody listening to this already knows about her bench press. But if you've been following her, you've seen um, she hit a 391 deadlift uh, a couple weeks ago as well as uh, I believe a 341 squat. Uh, so all three lifts are going really well. She's already underweight and she's gonna put up a huge performance. And then besides for that, we got Daisy Ariola Garcia, who's coming in with the biggest projected, the biggest total coming in of 442.5, which is a massive total. Um, and I've, I've taken a look at her training. Um, things, things look pretty good. She had, she has hit a big squat recently and she has the biggest deadlift of these people, I believe. So, um, and then also we also got Tiara George who also coming in only with a 390 total as of now, but all of her lifts are on the ups and she will also be into the 400. So we have four contenders who all of them could win on a given day. Yeah, that's a really good point. This play, this is, it's stacked. <clears throat> um, Mike, reserve your picks for the end. We'll let, we'll make these other two pick first. <laughs> and then you can be the <laughs> contrarian if you want. Um, also shout out Darlene Navarro. She's also in this class. Just so we say, you know, mention everyone that's in here. Um, we'll be looking forward. I mean, this is a deep, it's nice having, you know, a lot of people from the same weight class having some depth in the classes. So we can see these like battles and how they play out. She's capable of doing something that might, you know, maybe make one person think twice about trying to pull for the win or something like that at the end. Um, Julia, let's kick it over to you since this is your weight class and you know, all these lifters and they're training pretty well. Yeah. So, um, you know, as Mike said, um, Daisy and, um, Sophia have both hit um, huge squats, actually. I think they both squatted um, 374 recently, which is, uh, you know, huge for, for Junior in the 63s. I remember when that was, you know, a big deal in the Open. Um, 
I mean, still, it's still, it's still a great squad. I think that's what I ended with at national. So, I mean, that's phenomenal. Um, and then obviously, um, Joy has been hitting huge numbers on bench and squat, actually. Um, I think she hit, um, I want to say like 337 on squat recently. And um, her deadlift has been creeping towards 400. So, you know, normally, um, or, or before, before this uh, training cycle, I would have said, you know, that she would um, basically be, be using her bench to um, catch up or um, mitigate any uh, differences in total that, that would be accumulated from squat and deadlift with the other lifters. But um, I mean, she's catching them there. Um, and I think I, I might go with her. I might go with Joy um, uh, just because I think um, her bench is so far ahead and um, with how much she's caught up on squat and deadlift, uh, it's gonna be hard for um, anyone to make that up. All right, so <clears throat> you're picking Joy to win it. Yep. All right, might be because she's biased because we just did a long interview with her on the PA podcast and mm -hmm. she's such an easy person to root for. If you listen to that, you're gonna absolutely be cheering for Joy. Um, but no, that's no shade at any of these other women. So go ahead, Sam, let's get your picks on this one. What would you, what's your take? Yeah. Um, definitely see Daisy probably winning. Um, just like the, some of the stuff that she's been hitting in training. Um, she been hitting, she had some massive squats recently. The death was a little bit questionable, but in general, like she kind of has like such a outright lead in terms of total, like, you know, the difference between like 30, 40 kilos in total at this weight class is like massive. Um, and she's a seasoned lifter, right? You know, the, these um, other lifters are like just newly 18 and daily, Daisy's 21. And, you know, those three years of experience um, definitely play a big role. So I have Daisy winning and then I have Joy taking second, but I think Joy and uh, Camila are going to battle it out for second. But Joy's training has really been on fire recently. You know, her and Ben have, ben have really been cooking up uh, in terms of programming. Like it seems like even though she's cutting to this weight class from what she used to be at at 69, um, she just continues to progress, which is uh, pretty insane. Like she's even progressing her bench, which is like pretty awesome. Yeah. Like she's, I think she literally bench like two forty eight um, with room in the tank, which is absurd, especially for being eighteen. So I see Joy taking a second, but she definitely has that dark horse ability, um, depending on how Daisy ends up showing up on the day. So yeah, I mean they're both they're both awesome. I mean yeah, you know with Vin. Uh, uh, in her corner, U.S. national team coach um, for the for the juniors for the raw for the raw team this year, going over to Romania. Um, you know, with Vin in her corner, she's probably going to go nine for nine. She's kind of a subtotal, obviously with a, a massive bench. She's a subtotal specialist, so she's going to need to put up a huge subtotal and then try to push everyone else to go for a third deadlift that they can't hit. Um, I think Camila, if you think about Camila too, though, like she can grind her deadlift. She pulls conventional. She's the grind queen. So if you're going to mm -hmm. tune in, to, if mm -hmm. you like watching grinders, she will grind a squat and oh my God. I mean, she makes Panna look fast. Like when we're talking about <laughs> grinding, grinding deadlifts, she'll pull yeah. like a 10 second deadlift and block it out. So it's very interesting to see, like, you know, with her coach, whether they'll throw a number on the bar and just have her go out there and try and grind it out. It'll be exciting. It'll definitely come down to Camila's last pull. So I'm really pumped to see like what she might, I mean, and then there's the question of, will she be in range to possibly try to throw something and, and try to go for the win? In which mm -hmm. case joy could easily slide in there. If she misses joy will almost definitely slide in there if she misses. Um, but you know, so we'll kind of see like how they play out that strategy with the three-way battle. you got to be you know, you got to make a decision. You want to try and pull for the winner. You want to try and pull for silver. So, um, that's a very exciting, this is a really exciting one. I'm, I'm excited to see Daisy. I think she just came over to power of the America. Mm -hmm. This is only going to be her second meet with us. Like she just moved over. So, um, we might have like a, a real superstar and a real good shot at getting someone that can go over and win junior worlds at the 63s, which is a, a bat. It's going to be a battle no matter where you go anywhere on this earth you go to compete as a 63 there's going to be someone strong so we'll mm -hmm. see what how that goes but um mike let's kick it to you for your final picks and analysis here yeah so um this is interesting because i agree a little bit with what both of you were saying beforehand so joy's progress is definitely the rate of progress right now is incredibly fast but i'm gonna have to go with daisy just because she's 40 kilos ahead in terms of total that has actually been done already 
So even with crazy progress, putting 40 kilos more on the platform, besides for whatever else Daisy's going to put up, is very hard. I think I think the lead is enough where it's her battle to win, and I think the bigger battle will be for second place. Yeah, yeah, good point. I mean, that's why this is this is really the feature weight class, the 63 sub juniors and 63 juniors in session one. So you're tuning in first thing Friday morning, you're watching session one, what you're going to want to be watching for are these two 63 kilo battles that we have. Um, and especially this one with the 63 kilo juniors last word on this is just, yes. Like I want to reiterate that joy and Camila are much younger. They're going to be battling each other for a while. They're going to be in this, they're going to be juniors for a while. So that's what makes that second place. If it is a second place battle, because we don't know, like they could both possibly sneak in there and get the first, first place, get the gold medal. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a battle for a while to come. Whereas this is kind of Daisy's last, uh, shot here in the, in the, uh, in the juniors, or is that right? Or when do you age out of juniors? You guys know, uh, after 23, 23. 23. So she might own this weight class for a couple more years too. So, which is also like I was saying before, exciting. She might, we might have a potential world champion here in Daisy, um, in the 63 juniors. So that's cool to see as she grows in the next year or so. Anything else on those? Yeah. I just wanted to say, um, Tiara, I, I, she hasn't posted, um, a deadlift in like 14 weeks and she's been posting what looks to be like pretty sub maximal training. Yeah. Uh, your yeah. last squat was um, 314 and it looked really easy. And I don't know if that was like her top set or anything. Um, I think, you know, she could possibly be um, holding back her top sets. Um, and so I don't think that she's out of the running, but I, I do think, you know, um, Sophia and um, Joy and Daisy definitely um have been posting heavier lifts and on paper are slightly ahead. Yeah. And, um, just to clarify, like I, I always call her Camila Ayala. Um, that's her like Instagram. Her, her, her name is Sophia Ayala. That's who I was talking about before that can grind her deadlifts just in case there's any clarity there. Tierra George, I do also want to say, you know, she's training out there at Brown's gym. Um, that's where champions train, you know, that's their motto. Um, Leah Bavois is in there training. Um, you got like Jim Brown is in there, obviously training. Like we got a lot of like top level lifters in there training. Um, there's the, from top to bottom, there's all kinds of, uh, really strong competitors training in that gym. And so, yeah, they have a thing over there about not posting their top sets and whatnot. I know for a fact. So, um, we'll be curious to see like Tierra she could easily be someone who sneaks into one of these spots, especially depending on, again, if someone's trying to pull for the win or pull for second place, they miss, and she could easily get, find herself on the podium. Anyone have anything else you want to add there? But yeah, that, that definitely can't, got, got to put some respect on Tierra George's name or else we're going to be in trouble when she comes in here <laughs> and finishes you know, on the podium. <laughs> All right. Nothing else there. All right. So anyway, again, that's session one, the 63s. That's the battle we're really looking for. You wake up early. They're starting early Arizona time. I think weigh-ins are at like six. So starting at 8 AM. Um, so let's move into session two here. Uh, we got the men, <clears throat> we got 59 through 74s, uh, in session two, let's start off with the 59s and I'll kick it over to Mike gold. What's up with the 59s. So I think we also have uh, 53s. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. we've got 53s. So Go ahead. We have, yeah, so we have two 53s. Um, Om Pednikar, who I believe was a 59 last year for us in Turkey, and mm -hmm. Derek Lee, who recently competed at um, high school nationals. So they're coming in as the only two 53s. And um, Derek Lee's training is looking actually on the rise he finally made the switch from uh, high bar to low bar mm -hmm. and from benching with the most close grip i've ever seen to more of a moderate grip so his numbers are going up um i don't think he is going to be matching ohm who's a little bit more of a veteran but those they will both be putting up solid numbers and they'll be starting it off for sure that's a good one all right what do you got uh sam anything to add uh, yeah, um, I think Ohm will probably run away with it just because of how much larger his total already is. Unless, like, I think he is cutting a little bit, but unless, like, that cut like took everything out of him, I think he's a safe bet. 
All right. Good. Good one. Yeah. He was on the national team last year. He, he competed. Uh, he was on two U S national teams last year. He was on the North American team that went to Panama and he was on the uh, IPF world's team that went to Turkey. So he's seasoned. He's been on two different IPF platforms before. He's probably not going to fumble the bag at all. And so if he can put up his total, he'll probably be good. Julia, do you have something you want to add there? Yeah. I mean, I just, you know, um, I'm going to go with them as well. I think that that total is a lot to overcome um that entry total and i i think um yeah i mean i think if he you know hits his lifts and the the cut doesn't affect him then then he's got it yeah. all right cool so looking like ohm um shout out to his brother yash also was on uh the north american team last year hopefully he'll be there He's a great filmmaker, so hopefully he'll be making some some sweet films and stuff uh, of us for the 53s. All right, um, let's move up to the 59s. What do we got here, Mike? So the 59s, we actually have a bunch of lifters in both the sub-juniors and the juniors for the 59s. So right. in the sub-juniors, uh, we got, who do we got? We got Justin Noller, Cody Hansen, Tyler Reed, Prunger, uh, German Gastelum, and Britain Ford. So here I think we're looking at at the top two. We got Britain Ford and we got Tyler. Those two are both coming in with a 460 previous total. So they seem to be neck and neck. I don't know that much about them, but Britain Ford, I've seen his training a little bit and he's got all of his lifts look up a little bit. So I think we're going to be looking probably into the 480s. So I would have him as my favorite for this class. All right, let's kick it over to Sam. Uh, yeah, I'm in agreement. agreement. Um, I think Britain's training has been looking pretty solid, and we know a little bit more about him. I think he might have a little bit more competitive experience. But, uh, yeah, I think I think Britain will win. But, uh, you know, it's the same thing with all these damn lifters. Maybe Tyler shows up and has, like, a crazy day. But Britain's the one I've seen stuff from, and I think that – I think he's got it. All right. And, Julia, you got anything you want to add to this one? Yeah, um, I, I think uh, is probably the front runner here. Um, I have in the notes that he had a 475 total um, at a in a lighter weight class. So um, obviously, I, I think he's capable of you know more than than 460, and certainly his lift's been showing that. And um, yeah, I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna take this. All right. So we get there. We got it for the 59s. It's um, yeah, we got a lot of uh, we got some depth here in the 59s across the sub juniors. The future is bright uh, here for Waskar's class weight class, you know. Um, so let's go ahead and go over to the 59 kilo juniors. Mike, we'll so keep it to you. Yeah. Yeah. The 59 kilo juniors. We got a few lifters here. Also, we got Jose Barbier, Sean Orsco, Bodie Laco, Patrick Lay, and Dong Yun Kim. So this is going to be a very good class. Um, Bodie Laco, I believe the younger brother of Dalton Laco yep. from uh, battled against Wasker. And at, so like his brother, he's a very big deadlifter. Um, I believe he hit something like 255 in uh, training. Um, so Patrick is the, to me, the favorite coming in, he's hit 560 before, and he looks like he's going to be improving on that. All three lifts uh, should be PR'd. All three of them, he has hit bigger lifts in training than his previous meet. So I think he's the favorite, and he's going to be totaling into the 580s. I think 580 would be a, um, a good estimate of where his top end is, which is a very big total for 59s. That would like put him like third in uh, the forecast total for, for open worlds. But wow. I don't think we should sleep on Bodie either. With his huge pull, um, he will have the last say. And I don't know if it'll be close enough to actually pull for the win, but it should be entertaining either way. And his squad and bench have made some progress, but I would say it's the deadlift that the deadlift that's going to be exciting to, to pull, to see a potentially 260 pull for a 59 junior is not something you get to see every day. No, that's amazing. That's, that's going to be exciting. I'm really looking forward because I don't know that much about these lifters. Um, Bodie Laco, yeah, him and his brother Dalton, again, they train at Brown's Gym, Scranton. That's where the champions train, you know, that's their motto. So they don't post a lot of their top sets. They're not, like, posting all their lifts and whatnot on social media all the time. 
Um, but man, they show up when it counts and put down those huge deadlifts. So like, that's a big weapon in their back pocket. Um, Sam, you got anything in this weight class? Go ahead. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's the thing with Brown's gym. They're not posting the top sets of the heavy stuff, but like Bodie smoked, I think it was like a 551 deadlift. And this was like almost half a year ago on Instagram. That's the last time he posted, but uh, <laughs> he exactly. But um, I mean, the way he moved that, it's like, what is the top end range for his pulling strength, you know? Um, but I do think, I think Patrick will probably um, have a pretty sizable lead going into deadlifts, but you know, Bodie likely will um, load up wherever he has to to win if it's within like decent reach. And I mean, from the little we know about his training and like, uh, you know, his genetic family genetics with the deadlift, uh, probably has a good shot at pulling something pretty pretty friggin' ginormous for a fifty nine uh, mm-hmm. junior in order to win if he needs to. Yeah, and I've seen these guys out there in Brown's gym and stuff, and um, I think their training is going well from from my understanding. I mean, like you said, you don't know what they're posting, but I think as far as what I've seen, there's they're not any major injuries or anything. It's the only thing that seems to hold them back sometimes. Um, all right, Julia, what's up? Yeah, I mean, um, I agree with what everyone said. I think Patrick okay. is the favorite here. Um, but, you know, Bodie has a, a, a very, very extreme tactical advantage here um, in that he um, is going to be pulling last. and he's close enough that, um, you know, Patrick's going to feel the pressure and he's going to need to make every lift. So I think that, um, you know, if Patrick responds well to the pressure, then, you know, and he's uh, six for six headed into deadlifts. um, I think, you know, he's probably going to take it, but I think what we're really going to see here is um, whether, whether he holds up under pressure and um, yeah. Yeah, and what do you think about his ability to hold up under pressure, Sam? Uh, I mean, I think with, you know, with these age groups, it's hard to really know. But, I mean, in general, like, um, usually uh, there won't be, like, as much pressure because it's not, like, a world stage. So, I mean, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't think that's going to be a huge um, topic. Yeah, and final thoughts from you, Mike, on that one? So. The only thing I would mention is, um, I mean, his last few meets, I believe his last three meets, he's gone eight for nine, all of them. So he seems to do a good job of making attempts. So I think he's a pretty, he's going to have a pretty big lead. Well, he's going to have a very big lead coming into deadlifts. And I think if he's even five or six coming to deadlifts, it might be over. I think he might come into deadlifts with like something like a 30 kilo subtotal lead. And he, he also does have a big pull. It's not as big as as uh, Bodhi, but mm-hmm. we're talking something in like maybe the five thirty range, which is a very nice pull. Like we're not we're not <laughs> we're not uh, yeah we're not yeah, going for yeah. pretty sick still yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I mean he's two years older than Bodhi, so I mean if anyone is going to be feeling the nerves or whatever, it probably be Bodhi and probably wouldn't be Patrick. That's just my guess. But um, sure. all right then. That's a good one. So we got uh, the 59s. Let's kick it up to the 66s and let's start with the uh, sub junior men. Mike, you got stuff for us here? So for the sub juniors, okay, this actually is an interesting class. I actually wanted to mention it earlier. Yeah. One, of the, one of the stars that nobody's talked about is a 66 sub junior, Danny Harris, Daniel Harris. Yeah. His lifts have been going crazy. Um, it looks like his best total at the moment is 530. But um, I saw he posted earlier today about about what his attempted openers are. And I believe <laughs> he had, uh, his openers total to 577. So just to give perspective, if his openers are totaling 577, I don't know exactly what that means he's finishing up with. But um it should be in the 600s. Um, he hit a he hit a uh, 500 pound squat recently, a um, 315 bench. Uh, he's into the 500s on deadlifts, so I think um, I think he's going to put up a performance in the 600s that will be very, very, very impressive for a 66 up junior. For sure, and he's got two people: uh, Mason Erdely and Ryan Bui you know, in there with him as well. So, I mean, but yes, his total is like a hundred kilos above 
the next person in his weight class. He's an absolute phenom. Um, so Sam, you know, something a little bit about this. I, also he's from Nebraska. All right, go big red. Let's go. All right, <laughs> Sam. Uh, yeah. Uh, Danny's a beast. Uh, he did recently get into like a car accident where he got like a little bit injured. So his training has definitely been inconsistent because of that, but he's getting back into it. Um, and you know, he has like an insane potential, like, you know, the numbers he's putting up at this age at the 66 kilo class are pretty crazy. Um, his old coach before he stopped working with him kind of like let the standard slide and, you know, he's hitting some pretty big numbers in the gym, but, you know, maybe the standard was pretty questionable, but, you know, regardless, like he still has strength, like the amount of strength he has hitting uh, lifts to the competition standard is still uh, pretty ridiculous uh, for being 16 and a 66. I mean, Danny's going to run away with it um and likely after the meet i'm gonna start working with him as a coach and uh make him even more of a beast uh he's he is an insane future for sure yeah for sure um i'm i'm super excited to see him like he's 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 on social media a lot he posts a lot he's yeah. uh kind of like talking like hey i'm gonna be i'm gonna be the champ in this weight class mm -hmm. i'm gonna win a world title in this weight class so there's a lot of hype around him to like see like okay will he perform um, I don't have his numbers pulled up. What did he do at his last local meet? Um, it his was a really, um, not to be rude, but it was not a very good performance. I think it was either three for nine or four for nine. Yeah. Um, definitely. And that was, I think under the guidance of his old coach, um, definitely, you know, some questionable guidance there and questionable numbers chosen, which I don't really think is on him. Cause you know, he's, he was literally 16. Um, yeah. but oh, actually no, he went five for nine. Um, as far as strong, but uh, okay. he still put up. He still put up a decent total, but he definitely didn't hit quite near what he was hitting in the gym. And I think he also took some really crazy jumps. Like he was taking like around thirty pound jumps on squat and deadlift, which was a little bit intriguing strategy there as well. So yeah, I think his last meet, last meet's not really indicative of what he can do. Yeah, for sure. We all know this kid's strong as hell. He's from Nebraska. Yeah. And uh, he's, got the, he's got the talent. Um, we know when he gets with the right guidance and gets a little more experience on these national stages, we got to start grooming him up and get ready for it to send him off to the world stage and uh, bring back some gold medals for Team USA. Julia, you have anything you want to add here? Yeah, um, I, I just uh, looked him up on Instagram. And yeah, I mean, these, these lifts are um, his most recent uh, squat and bench are, are pretty phenomenal. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's um, much to say. I think this class is going to be the Daniel Harris show, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing it. So, yeah, I think I think uh, 600s is is pretty well within reach here. For sure. All right, and also shout out Colin Fahey in there. I think I, I didn't mention him. Uh, Ryan Bui, Mason Early, Colin Fahey, and then Daniel Harris in that weight class. Those are the studs. Um, all right, let's kick it on up to the 66 kilo juniors. Um, we got Ari Kiefer, Edgar Zampini, Kyle Nowak, Zach Taylor, Kai Winson, and Justin Noller in this weight class. Oh no, I'm sorry. Justin Noller is uh, 59, but yeah, those are who we got. Mike, wh who are you taking and, uh, what's your analysis here? So in the 66 juniors, um, so I, I saw actually Edgar Zampini had a 570 total, which is a pretty nice total, but I could not really find anything about it. I couldn't find an Instagram or any any sort of information. So the two that I do know about are both Kyle Nowak and Zach Taylor. So they're actually both in a very similar situation. Both of them uh, recently competed at Worlds. So Zach competed at Junior Worlds in Turkey and Kyle competed at University Worlds. And they both had a bit of a down meet. They're both their best meet was the previous one, Zach, at a uh, collegiate Nats last year, and uh, Kyle at junior Nats or the other way around last year. So they both put up about a 6:30 and 6:37 total, yeah. uh, one day apart from each other a year ago. And then they both took down meets at the world stage, which is to be expected, right? There's travel, there's the strictest standard, but. So I've seen both their training, and I see Zach's training all the time because we train together. Um, of the two, Zach's training a little bit to me looks like a little bit cleaner in terms of standard. Like he doesn't use straps. Uh, his squat depth looks very good. His, he's pausing his benches. But um, Kyle has a massive pull. Um, I believe he pulled something like last year, like 285. And in the gym, he's pulled even more. So he will have the last say on deadlifts. And 
they can both potentially total in the 650 range. I think it's possible. I don't know that either of them will necessarily do it on the day, but they both have it in them. So I think this should be a good show and the top two are going to be fun to watch. For sure. I'm excited for these young guys, as I already mentioned in the overview, um, Sam, let's kick it to you for this one. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's hard to find stuff about Edgar. So we don't really know. He could be like a dark horse candidate, you know, um, we don't know much about him, but Kyle and Zach post all the time. Um, and I agree. I'm on the same page. With you. I think Zach's training is much cleaner and much more predictable. Um, whereas Kyle definitely there's a lot of drop pulling and some interesting stuff in terms of the standard. Um, but Kyle, I think he pulled like 633 or something uh, last year at CNAS for a podium. And like, it was a pretty crazy pull that was like pretty much out of almost out of his wheelhouse and like basically pulled it out of nowhere uh, to pull up for placing. And like, you know, he has that ability and like that, uh, you know, kind of switch to turn on that not everybody has. Um, but I also think that Zach has, that, especially having gone to uh, worlds. And I think Zach's total from worlds isn't really indicative of what he's really capable of because um, I think I know there were some attempt uh, selection issues and stuff, but um, you know, Zach's done it on the world stage. He's um, he's competed in the national stage a lot um, and his training is just so consistent uh, and consistent to the standard that I would take Zach to win. But um if Kyle, Kyle could also just come in and run away with it, if he's hitting some of the stuff he hits in the gym um, and he hits it to the standard after that cut. Um, yeah. So I got Zach one, Kyle two, but I also wouldn't be shocked if Edgar came in and put everybody on notice randomly and we just had no clue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, I can't wait to meet this Edgar guy, man. I'm just <laughs> over here. Uh, Julia, yeah. you got anything you want to add to this? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I pretty much have the same thoughts. Um, Edgar, if you're listening, uh post some lifts uh tell us your instagram uh so we can we can follow you because um you're you're in this too um i think as far as uh zach and kyle um go i think um like everyone said zach's training is a little more um up to standard his um top end is slightly higher um and i think that he definitely has the edge um you know, Kyle, um, he could pull something for the win. Um, but I think if they both, um, you know, hit their best lifts, I'm, I'm going to, and I, you know, we, we hope they do. Um, I'm going to give the extra Zach. Yeah. One thing to think about with this weight class is that these two dudes are absolutely diced. Like they are so shredded Mm -hmm. already. And so I just wonder like who is walking around closer to body weight to being closer to the weight class right now um, versus yeah do you know anything about that mike yeah yeah zach's is very close to weight he's like a kilo and a half less than a kilo and a half overweight so he's not gonna have much of a cut okay yeah because neither of them have anything to cut like they are absolutely freaking shredded who are you taking in a bodybuilding contest between these two (laughs) Uh, i don't know it's a toss-up just like this this matchup here i mean they're both shredded um, I think I would give the edge to Zach with the beard, you know, he's got the beard going now. He's not a baby face anymore. Like he was last year. Um, maybe if he wins, he's going to shave it. I don't know. Let's see. So, uh, that's a fun one. That's, that's going to be a battle. Um, I don't know if these dudes like each other. Do you guys know? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like this one to me, like they both, I mean, especially Zach, like seems like he, he Zach has a bad taste in his mouth from worlds. Like there's no question about it. He had a bad taste in his mouth last year at nationals because he got bad guidance by me as far as like actually how to get on the team ended up, you know, thinking all he had to do was win his weight class when really he had to hit a Carpino score. Um, and you know, ended up as an alternate and that did not sit well with him at all because he won his weight class easily. Didn't take his last deadlift, uh, you know, stuff like this didn't take his third bench, um, because he, he was the only guy in the weight class. So he has stuff to like, definitely like he wants to rectify all this stuff that, that went wrong for him last year. Um, so I feel like he's got a little chip on his shoulder. Um, what do you, th- what do you, what's your take, Mike? What's, what's, uh, you train with him and stuff like, is Zach Taylor got a chip on his shoulder? Yeah. I mean, I think Zach wants it right now more than anybody I can see. I mean, last year at worlds, um, there were a few mistakes that ended up costing him potentially his gold. And yeah. I don't know what's going on in the rest of the world in terms of like the competition for juniors this year. I don't know whether it's stiffer or not, but last year he should have been the favorite and probably should have won. And this year he 
probably needs to win nationals to even make it back to worlds with how, how competitive the juniors is. So I think he's going to give it all he's got. And I think we see probably something like a nine for nine day and making Kyle pull something crazy for the win, which is possible, but I, I think he's going to do what it takes to push him as far as he can. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, like, I'm sad that we didn't get to see this battle like like last year and year after year. These guys, they both have like another year-ish um, in the juniors, it looks like. Because um, like in our notes, we got them 21 and 22 years old. So maybe we'll get to at least run this battle back again next year. And let's see if we can't like, you know, get some hype here, get a little rivalry going here between these two 66 kilo juniors. Um, Kyle just seems like a sweetheart, like on Instagram, like a super nice kid. So I don't know if he'll engage with that kind of like <laughs> trash talking and whatnot, but I I have a feeling that Zach Taylor could be pushed into getting some trash talk going. Um, uh, we'll see. So this will be something we'll try to hype these kids up and, uh, get this battle <clears throat> going and <clears throat> hopefully we'll get to see it, run it back a couple of times. <clears throat> All right. Um, and there's always a chance with these guys putting up these crazy numbers that both of them could end up getting onto the uni- onto the world's team as well. And we could see this rematch again in Romania. So that would be pretty cool as well. Um, all right, let's move. <clears throat> you guys got anything else you want to say to that? No, let's move to the 74 sub juniors. We got a big weight class here. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to run through all the names. Adam Lehigh, Nabil Rifai, uh, Hayden Gage, uh, Matthew Twist. Isaac Cotney, Jack Reynolds, Nicholas Gaines, and Wyatt Twohey. Um, Tui, Wyatt Tui. Um, so yeah, this is a kind of a big weight class. That's a lot for sub juniors. This is one of the bigger ones in the sub juniors for sure. So what do we got going on here? Mike. So in this class, I actually was looking for all of them. I couldn't find information about most of them, but the two that I did find information about are Jack Reynolds and Nicholas Gaines. And these two are two strong lifters. Um, Nicholas Gaines has, it says 567 and a half from, from Path to America, but I believe he's hit more previously. Um, and Jack Reynolds, um, I think is coming in with a 600 total, which is very nice. Um, I think both of them will be past 600. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confident Jack Reynolds will push past 600. He has a very, very large bench, although not always the standard, but even the standard has a very, very large bench. I, he hit some sort of like <laughs> TikTok 405 bench, which was obviously nowhere near where he's actually sitting at for powerlifting. But I think something like 350 is more reasonable, which will give him a huge lead on bench. But um, Nick has a nice squat and a nice deadlift as well. So I think they're both pulling into like the mid 500s, somewhere in like the 540 to 560 range. So I think we'll have a, a pretty good ballot battle. And I think Jack comes out on top. All right, Sam. All right. Good. Good. That's good. Mike. What, what do you got, Sam? Yeah. Um, I'm friends with Nick. So I see a lot of his training that he posts on the close friends and stuff. Um, he's definitely coming to this meet super hot. Uh, whereas Jack's not coming in off an injury. And like, I believe he lost a lot of weight because of that injury. Um, obviously his bench. Yeah. He had like a four or five touch and go like, butt off the bench uh bench which is but that's just ridiculous like being yeah. able to do that at 16 years old like mo- like for when i was 16 years old i benched two plates for three and i thought it was like the coolest thing ever um so yeah that's like <laughs> stuff like that's crazy um a lot a lot of potential to jack but um i think coming up from the injury we haven't really seen him post like very heavy squat or deads and it seems like he posted i think it was like a 440 or something similar to squat and it looked kind of hard um, in comparison to what he had been doing in the past, he was really like on like a war path. Um, so I think his training is kind of taking a big hit. So and I know Nick's training has been going really well and Nick's um, very focused and uh, in this meet and Nick signed up to, for this meet to win. Uh, I'm taking Nick to win um, just because man, because of, you know, Jack's injuries, but Nick's also really on fire right now. So I got Nick winning and then Jack taking second, but it's definitely going to be a battle regardless of Jack's injury status. Yeah, sounds like it. You guys are really hyping this one. This is going to be a fun one to watch. Um, these two young kids are both like 16 years old, They're putting up some big numbers here. Um, and so it'll be an exciting battle. Julia, who do you got in this one? Um, so I, I don't um, know too much about either lifters training, but I think it was Jack Reynolds. Did he total that at um, 83? Yeah, that's yeah. 
so I mean, I think also, you know, if, if someone's injured, um, and then, you know, they lost weight, and, you know, they might be cutting too, those are, those are big, big factors um, to consider. Um, so, you know, that's, that's going to be a tough one. Um, I don't really, I don't, like I said, I don't know much, but I think, you know, I'm always going to tend to go for the lifter that is um, on the rise and has the momentum because, you know, uh, momentum is huge in this, uh, in the sport. Um, and it makes a huge difference on the platform too. Um, mm -hmm. so shout I'll out Mike T. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll take Nick. Um, to win this. All right. That's a, that's a stacked. I mean, it's fun to have these battles in the sub juniors, you know, um, it's exciting. Yeah. I can't wait to see these kids and just, these are monster numbers that we're talking about here. Um, so, I mean, the future is bright for the 74s and yeah, it'll be curious to see because you're saying Jack is moving down, but he had like his, his bet, their best total, he's got 30 kilos. So it's like, he could afford to lose a little bit and still win, but you're saying that gains is ready. He needs totals going up. So, um, that'll be a fun one to see for sure. All right, let's go to the 74 kilo juniors then. Is that right? Do we have these in here as well? Yes. Yeah. Um, we got Marcus Diallo, Colin Holtzman, and Christopher Batista Torres. So, Mike, what do you got going here? So, in this weight class, it seems to be um, the Marcus Diallo show. I mean, he's coming in with an 120 kilo projected lead, 675 for a uh, 74 junior. So, um, I took a look at his training. His training looks very interesting, actually. Um, I mean, he a couple weeks out, and you see his last post is him doing tens on squats. Not yeah. really, uh, not really. <laughs> what you see, like, but um. So I, I haven't seen so much of his recent training, but he has a huge deadlift. Um, mm -hmm. I believe he's pulled three hundred in the gym. Oh, it was a bit back, but three hundred in the gym, and he has squatted. He actually squatted six hundred in the gym a while ago, but nothing near that since. It looks to be like in the like maybe like five five sixty five seventy range now, but um yeah I think we're gonna see something in the upper fives maybe like five seventy five squat, um maybe a three hundred key pull and like mm -hmm. somewhere in like the three twenty three thirty bench range so it's his by a lot and the question is just I think the big thing is does he break into the seven hundreds which I think he will which is very impressive yeah. um. 700, I believe it was 707 or 705 that won Junior Worlds last year for 74s. And mm -hmm. he's going to be in that range at uh, Nat. So something mm -hmm. to look forward to. Yeah, that's going to be like an, a performance for the ages. Um, if he's able to total something that could win Worlds, you know, then that'll put him, you know, really high in the running to make it onto the U.S. national team. So, um, Julia, what do you have for this weight class? Yeah, I mean, um, Marcus is just, you know, uh, seems not not to be dismissive, but, you know, head and shoulders kind of above um, his competition here. And if he can break into the, the 700s, I mean, that's that's phenomenal. I, I think, you know, as uh, Powerlifting America kind of grows and gets more members, we're really going to um, see people pushing these... Um, these world's numbers. And I, I think this is, uh, this is one of those cases. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he puts up. For sure. That's going to be some exciting stuff. All right. So we'll move on here to the, uh, session three, the last session of day one here, we got the 69 kilo through the 84 plus kilo women. Let's start off with the 69s and in the sub juniors, we've got Ava Lacoste. And it looks like we've got a national champion on our hands um, because she's going unopposed as long as she doesn't bomb out. Looks like she could win. Anyone want to say anything about her? She's got a 301. She looks like she's still growing into the weight class. Pretty good total there. What Anyone have anyone want to add to this? I mean, right, I, oh. go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't really find much. The one thing I saw was it looks like the one meet she's done was an RPS meet, which is how uh -huh. we have the 301 because it was a meet in pounds. But other than that, I couldn't really find anything else. So, Julia, go ahead, Julia. Yeah, I mean, I just, I mean, I think it's amazing, you know, that that these totals are um, being put up at this age. I mean, she's what 15 years old. Um, so, yeah, I mean, 301 is great. You know, like Mike said, um, RPS, uh, it's pound plates. It might, uh, it's a deadlift bar. Um, 
24 hour way and those are all things to consider but you know i think if she just opens conservatively and uh takes smart jumps then yeah she's she's got it yeah and it, it doesn't seem like she needs the two hour way or the 24 hour way in since she's coming in light anyway all right, yeah. let's uh, go to the 69 kilo juniors. Then we got Megan Richard, August Reeves, and Carolyn Connor. So, mm-hmm. what do we think about this weight class? Anyone, want, Sam, you want to do this one first? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a pretty easy one to do. Um, Carolyn's basically running away with it. Um, her training's still on fire. Like, literally, she hasn't not been on fire with training like since she started almost. Um, and, you know, she went to uh, Worlds last year. And this year she's coming in as a really formidable threat. Um, she's really becoming like a pretty crazy all around lifter and her training hasn't really slowed down at all. And I'm sure she'll probably PR all three or be able to PR all three on the platform. Uh, so I think she's definitely running away with this class. All right, Mike, what do you think? Yeah. So I agree with what Sam was saying. Um, so of all the lifts, I think she probably could PR all of them. I mean, squats can be hard because she had a really uh, nice grinder at uh, Open Nationals. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen that much more, but on bench, she definitely has hit more in the gym multiple times. So she's probably looking to bench around 200 for the first time, which would be a nice PR. And then deadlift, she's pulled 405. Um, it wasn't on kilos, so it's not exactly the same, but that's going to be a nice PR because I believe, 380 is what she hit last meet so definitely expect a deadlift pr probably a small bench pr and i'm not sure about squat but even without any squat pr we're talking like another 15 kilos on her total so she's coming in hot and then another lifter to take a look at megan richard uh she's coming in 372.5 um total coming in but she looks like she's uh making some progress she has a nice squat um and all all of her lifts are pretty balanced i think she's a bigger squat than deadlift but i think she's going to be totaling close to 400 probably in like 390 range which is a very strong total for 69 junior so should keep our eyes out mm-hmm. yeah that's good man all right and julia yeah um i i don't have too much more to add here um i actually lifted with carolyn at uh open nationals and um, you know, like Mike said, um, her ability to grind on squat was uh, pretty phenomenal. And I think it, it shows the maturity of a much older lifter. And I think that she, she's in a good spot to, to put up something really good here. Um, yeah. And she's just a fun lifter to watch. You know, she, she goes all out and, uh, yeah. She's all smiles. Uh, we call her the smilest lifter in power in America. Um, she has done nothing but massive stages. Like I think her first meet was nationals last year, then worlds in Turkey. Then she's like, I'll just go to open nationals in Austin and be like out there with Claire Zai and Chelsea Savitt. And so she has experience on all the big stages. She's pretty chilled out. She has fun. Um, so everything's pointing to her having a big total. She's done 437.5. And at, uh, at, that's the total she did in Austin. She's been PRing a lot of stuff since then. So I'm almost positive she'll be able to do better than that. The one thing I'll say is that she she's currently sitting, if we're looking at um, you know, whether she's gonna make it on the US national team or not, that 437.5, the 69 kilos uh juniors in the worlds are really strong. That is only a Carpino seven, um, which you know puts her in like around the fourth or fifth highest Carpino um of anyone that's been that's competed so far. So I do think that she needs to come in and and improve upon that total if she wants to guarantee a spot on the U.S. national team. Um, now, the other thing is, is that it is decided also by IPF Goodlift points too, and she's really highly ranked there. Her total is great there, so she'll probably be all right. But um, it's just something that, like, she's definitely going to need – she she wants every kilo she can get to ensure her spot on that U.S. national team. So, so yeah, let me just address that. Cause, yeah. Um, it, the, I know. I know what you mentioned about the Carpino. It's true. Um, the 69 juniors at Worlds are the most stacked class in the world. Um, mm-hmm. So – from Carpino will be hard, but I believe the criteria is if you win nationals and you have a top nine good lift score, you get an automatic entry. And by yes. my current projections, I have her putting up the 
fifth highest good lift score. So I think she'll be comfortably in range where if she goes in and hits lifts, she will lock up a top nine spot and lock up her world spot. Yeah. She's in a predicament because her total from, uh, open worlds, like or from open nationals doesn't count as that winning your weight class. So that total would be the, a total. If she doesn't beat that total, then she'll be in the alternate pool with that total based on Carpino score. But then it's a question of, um, if she wins her weight class and puts up a top nine, good lift score, then she'll secure her spot in an automatic bid. So that's a very interesting one. That's a very tricky one. I'll definitely, I'll bring that up with the U S national team coaches and just talk about how all that stuff plays out. Um, but yeah, it's definitely one where it's like, she's kind of in a world of her own in the platform, but she's also going to be trying to guarantee that she secures that U S national team spot. And she needs a big total. She needs to probably PR that total for sure to guarantee a spot. So. All right. Is there um, anything else we want to talk about in this weight class? Did everyone go? I'm just everyone... I know she's a, a quite tall for the weight class. Do you guys know like how close she sits um, to weight? Or like, does she have a big cut or anything like that? Uh, she had a cut at national. She said that she picked a Remember in the press conference, she said that they chose this weight class as one that she can grow into. And I think she's still in that phase. So I don't think she's going to have a problem with the cut or anything um, for at least a couple more years going forward. Just based on what I know, based on what, because we asked her that question at the press conference and um, yeah, that's what she, she mentioned that. So, all right, then um, if there's nothing else there with the 79 or with the 69s, let's move on over to the 76s. And in the sub juniors, we got Sarah Rogers and Ann Tyler. So who wants to talk about this one? Uh, I'll take it. Go ahead. Um, so um, they're listed here as Sarah uh, at 17 years old with a, a 310 entry total and Ann at 15 years old with a 287.5 entry total as basically um, a 76 that decided, you know, not to cut. Um, so I think, um, again, with the sub juniors, um, it's hard to tell, especially, I mean, you know, with Anne, that's, that's a very, very high total for someone that young. And um, she could put a lot on there. Um, and Sarah's also young, so she, she could also take um, it's, it's really hard to know, but I think Sarah definitely has the advantage here without really looking at their lifts on Instagram. All right. Let's kick it over to Mike. I, I don't really know much about this class. I couldn't find, I couldn't find any Instagram or anything for either of these lifters. So all I see is just the, their totals are coming in. So I'm just going to go with uh, Sarah with the higher uh, nominated total. All right. And Sam. Yeah, I'm the same boat. Uh, I would take Sarah with the higher nominated total, but we don't know much about either of these lifters, but I would say Sarah probably comfortably. All right, yeah. Um, I actually know Ann Tyler. She's uh, the younger sister of John Tyler. Um, Sam, you might remember he competed at that meet in Buffalo yeah. with you. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and and Ann competed up there as well in Buffalo. Um, oh. She's a stud. I mean, she's strong. She's super young. She, her total is yeah. building. From my understanding, that performance um, was her first time back in a while. And so, like, if she's been training hard since then, she'll probably put a lot of kilos on her total. So, like, she's definitely – her brother currently, John Tyler, is in South Africa right now for Bench Worlds. So, shout out to him and the whole Tyler family. They're full of strong people, <laughs> apparently. So, um, but, yeah, we don't have too much more information on that. So, let's go to the 76-kilo juniors. And here we got the reigning champ, Jessica Kinney who went to Worlds, was on the U.S. national team last year, and we got Sarah Roden. So, uh, Mike, you want to take this one? Go ahead. Yeah, so um, Jessica, I remember her from Turkey last year. Um, her lips are blowing up. Um, she looks to be squatting in the 400s, um, benching. Uh, she, I believe she had a 265 uh, bench single sometime back, and she pulled uh, 475, I think, or something like that. So uh, I, expect, I expect her probably to total – in the five, five 20s, which is a huge 76 junior total. I mean, she already has a 505 coming in, which is mm -hmm. obviously um, the biggest, it's actually the biggest total of any of these lifters, <laughs> uh, regardless of weight class. But uh, I expect, I expect PRs on everything and just a massive, massive meet. 
for sure. For sure. She's awesome. And it looks like her training is going really well. Uh, Sam, you have something you want to add? Go ahead. Yeah, no, her training has been on fire. Um, and she's been talking about like how easy it's been being at this weight and like her training going so well this weight. So I have no doubt that she's definitely going to be in a pretty crazy performance. And then hopefully we'll see her at the 76 this year at Worlds. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what went into the decision last year. Uh, maybe it was the competition, Carpino scores, or who know what who knows what it was. But it seems like she's a good fit in the seventy sixes, and seems like she's um, she's definitely like seems like the cut's going well from just from what I've seen from what she's posting on Instagram and everything. Like she's right around body weight or whatever. So um, yeah, and like Mike said, good point there. Biggest total uh, of the day for all of the women on, on the women's side um, on um, in these classes. So. Let's move on then to, yeah, including, including the, the sub junior, uh, 84 pluses. Um, she, she might get out total by Lou about in it, who could put up like a five fifty but, um, but yeah, like it's pretty cool for a 76 to be putting up numbers, like two weight classes up. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Then speaking of which let's, uh, go ahead and move up to the 84s. Then we'll talk about the sub juniors. We got Rachel Shansky, Shanti Kalsa and Michaela von Langen. And um, Mike, we'll go to you again. Who do you got on this? Okay, so um, I couldn't find much on Shanti Kalsa, but the other two lifters, uh, shout out Rachel Olshansky. She asked me to send her, her my research uh, for this meet. So my message uh -huh. to her and to Michaela Van Langen is they're both very close. They're coming in with uh, five kilos separating them. Both their training looks to be uh, a little bit on the up, so I expect uh, small PRs from both of them. So I think. I think we're looking probably in the um, 370 range, maybe somewhere between like 365 and 375, I would say will be the winner. They're both capable of it. Um, Michaela has a little bit of a bigger pull. Um, Rachel has a bigger bench, so she's going to have to come in into the deadlifts with a probably like a 10 kilo lead or something like that. I think it'll be very close. In the end, I am going to go... I'm going to go with Rachel, but I think this could literally, I think this will go down to the last poll. That's exciting. That's really exciting. This is one that I did not have on my radar. So it's definitely cool to hear that, that this is another one of these weight classes where we're going to have a battle. Um, anyone else have anything they want to add to this, Sam? Yeah. Um, Rachel is like a local lifter. She works at some of the gyms uh, near me in Illinois and, you know, she's like a high school lifter. So she competes a lot for like, you know, Illinois high school federation. And then also, for us, um, and that 342 she did, I believe, is super recent. Um, and I think she really did that like last month. And you know, she's done uh, nationals prior, and she definitely has that experience. Um, and Michaela is coming in with a slightly higher total, but I think Rachel has more experience. And then Shanti, we don't really see much posting from, but uh, Shanti was on our sub junior world's team last year, I think. Yep. Um, and I think she was like the youngest lifter on the team, which is pretty crazy as she's like, you know, literally 15. Um, but she just doesn't post training that I know of. Um, for all we know, maybe she's like progressed a ton and she's gonna like walk away with it or something. But uh, I got I got Rachel likely. Um, you know, she has a national experience and she seems like her training's been going really well. Like today, she hit like close to her PR deadlift, um, and it was decently easy. And she's been cutting uh, already before the meet, and it was pretty good. So I think she has that training momentum. So I would take Rachel first, then. Michaela second and then Shanti third, but I wouldn't be surprised if it really ends up in any of the possible orders for top three. Yeah. I mean, especially with Shanti being 15, uh, when she went to worlds in Turkey and she might be like 16 now, like that's an age where you can progress really fast. I've seen some of her training. She's, she posts every now and then. Um, yeah. and so she's definitely training. I mean, she doesn't post like her top lifts or whatever. Uh, she trains out of New Mexico, you know, down there in New Mexico with Mike Z and Bill Helmick and these guys. So uh, but go ahead, uh, Julia, what's your take on this one? Yeah, I mean, I'm actually, you know, this is one of those sleeper battles that I'm actually really looking forward to um, because I think that all of the lifters here have a fighting chance. Um, and it's really just going to, you know, come down to to who um, performs on meet day. I, I think Rachel, you know, has, has the advantage here from what I've seen. Um, but yeah, I think this should be a really fun one to watch. So. Yeah. All right. So that's going to be a surprise battle there. And then let's move it on over to the 84 kilo juniors. <clears throat> so here we got Summer McDermott, Alexa, Brianna, but 
Vachatu, Vachatu, and Antara Jackson. And so, you know, Antara is the reigning champ. She went to Worlds last year. Alexa, she trains out of Vin's gym, Kenmore Barbell there in Buffalo. So we know she's a stud. And then I don't, we don't have much information on Summer. So Mike, if you got anything, let's go with you. Yeah, so I couldn't find so I, Summer. I couldn't even find the open powerlifting meet. So as far as I know, she has not ever competed. Um, but of the other two lifters, so we've got Antara. She's the, the reigning uh, member of the U.S. national team. And um, I haven't seen anything like like um, significant in training that like um, would show some crazy increase. But she's already at a 505 total, which is a very strong total. And even if she just repeats that, I mean, this is her class to win. But Alexa Brianna, she just pulled a 210 kilo deadlift yesterday, which is something like maybe 20 kilos over her comp PR. So that's a massive. Uh, yeah. Goal. And all of her lifts in general, not just that, everything uh, looks good. So I expect, um, I expect a small bench PR from her, a massive deadlift PR, and I'm not sure about squats. Um, it looks things look a little bit sub max, so I can't really say where I expect her to finish up there. But I would say all in all, we're thinking somewhere in the like maybe four sixties. So I don't think she's gonna really be um battling with Antara, but it'll be putting up a nice total that might be forty kilos or thirty kilos over her best total as of yet. So it'll be fun to watch that deadlift. Yeah, Antara coached by Mike T, you know, the OG, mm -hmm. the legend, reactive training systems. And then Lex is coached by Vin, you know, out there in Buffalo, Kenmore Barbell. And like you said, she's been just PRing everything. She's pretty new to the sport as well. Like she was out there helping out at the meets we did in Buffalo. And and she's an amazing person, super nice, super fun. I'm rooting to see. Like they're both, they're both super nice people. You know, Antara Jackson also from the US national team last year is like one of the crowd favorites. And so, yeah, it'll be cool. It's cool to see that there will, get, we'll, we might get a battle on our hands, depending on what Lex got up her sleeve. We know that both of them are going to perform well, you know, and put up a lot of lifts, make a lot of lifts. Julia, do you have something on this one? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, and her, her total is, is pretty far ahead. Um, but uh, Alexa has been hitting some massive PRs. Um, they're both 21 years old. So, they both have a few more years left, and I think that this could really develop into like a good rivalry um, potentially down the road. Um, I'm always going to, uh, you know, all other things being equal, go with the lifter that has the IPF experience because I think that that is a big deal and it makes the national stage a little bit less intimidating. Um, and you know, her total is far ahead, but I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what Alexa puts up as well, especially in deadlift, as Mike said. So this should be a good one to watch. For sure. Yeah, this will be an exciting one. I'm, I'm curious to see because Antara hasn't been posting. Like, uh, as far as what I've seen, she hasn't posted much. So who knows? She might be packing something huge. Sure, sure. Um, all right, let's uh, final go to the final weight class in this. We only have sub juniors in the 84 plus. Um, we talked about it at the top, Luella and Chelsea. Let's go through, uh, Mike, what's your take on this one? Oh, so this is a weight class that you can't miss. We got um, Chelsea Annamore and Luella Bowden, uh, both coming in, having already told, totaled 500 kilos, and both of them looking like they can total more than 500 kilos. So this is going to be a good battle between the two. Um, as of now, Luella has the, has the bigger total, but... Um, Chelsea hit a huge squat, uh, I think 205 with more in the tank. Um, and she has a big deadlift, um, somewhere in the maybe 215 range, something like that, and has a good bench also. So I think on a good day, on a good day, I think it's possible for her to total in the 530, 540 range. I think both lifters can, and I expect, I expect at least one of them to total upwards of 530 maybe both so i think it'll be a good battle and there'll be big lifts from both of them on all three lifts we're not talking like one lift specialist we'll have big squats we'll have big benches and we'll have big deadlifts so watch out for this one mm -hmm. for sure sam you got something you want to add 
Yeah. Um, I mean, we saw Luella open that. Um, and, you know, she didn't quite have the performance that she wanted to there, but, you know, it seems like her coach isn't, you know, completely a powerlifting coach. He's kind of learning about powerlifting as he's coaching her because he coaches mainly like athletes. Um, and he kind of discussed different things they would be taking an approach to training. And I think if they even like just fix some small things that make, they would go like pretty long. Like I'm pretty sure, like he mentioned, maybe it's like, didn't even have a taper week. Like they just, she just literally didn't lift for a week or something. Yeah. They can be like fixing fixing something like that, like could be a really big difference because you know D training can do crazy things, um, especially when your numbers are like that. But um, you know, I think if they iron those kinks out, uh, it should be Luella's class. Um, you know, Luella has just uh, monstrous numbers on all three, but I know Chelsea's been having uh, really good training recently as well. So um, you know, if Luella's team and I uh, heard they don't quite iron out um, everything they need to, uh, I would say Chelsea probably will swoop in and win but i think if luella has a really good meet uh she's pretty much untouchable like if she does like 550 pretty dang hard to beat that um and you've seen that total from like a sub junior is uh pretty crazy so yeah i got luella winning and then chelsea in second but it's also pretty close to a toss-up it's gonna depend on the day and how the lifters come in yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, Chelsea's coached by Brianna, T- Brianna Terry. Um, so she's like, you know, a God in the powerlifting world, like one of the, one of the strongest women in the world. Um, she hangs out at a gym with, you know, Sean Noriega squ- uh, spotting her on squats and stuff. <laughs> she's got a very hype crew around her, um, and whatnot. So it'd be interesting to see. I know just speaking on what, what Sam's talking about that I get it to you, Julia is, um, that <clears throat> Luella's coach bought Matt Gary's book, like before oh. I even bought it because I, de- we talked about it. Cause Matt Gary was in the press conference with, with him and her. Um, and, uh, yeah, he, he already had it. Like I, I reached out to remind him about it like a week later or whatever. And he already had it and was already reading it. So he seems very hungry to learn about powerlifting. So it, I'm mm-hmm. very excited to see, because, um, you know, they, we could have a pipeline of, of good lifters coming out of that high school. So that's something really pump- exciting to see. Mm-hmm. Um, Julia, what do you, what's your take? Yeah. So, I mean, um, both these ladies, um, you know, at, at their last respective competitions, um, maybe didn't have quite the, um, the meat that they wanted. I, I, I think we should talk about, uh, Chelsea didn't have a handler at nationals and she, it turns out that she was actually pretty badly injured, um, going into deadlifts and still managed to do this. Um, so I think, you know, like they both have massive room for improvement. I think, um, you know, if, if, if Chelsea has someone helping her with attempts, um, this time around, um, I think that'll help her a ton. I think coming in healthy will help her a ton. I think with Luella, like, you know, her coach is on the right track. Um, and she's definitely capable of pulling, um, or totally more. I think she got, she locked out more from what I remember the competition and um, she got called for, for hitching or something like that. So um, she's definitely capable of more too. And yeah, like you said, um, it's really cool to see these um, high school coaches who, you know, uh, come over from other sports, getting really into powerlifting and um, really starting to create like, you know, possibly dynasties of, um, of uh, you know, powerlifting teams at their high schools and um yeah. make it more, more popular in the state so no they're both stars on the rise for sure um it seems like luella is also you know does other high school sports like she was talking she's like highland games and stuff and um i think also luella is like local or very close to sort of like arizona i think is where she's based and so i think mm-hmm. she's somewhat local that might have an effect um on chelsea you know she has to fly up from miami it's a little bit of a ways so we'll see about, you know, for young, for, for sub juniors and stuff, they'll be all right. It's us old guys that have the trouble with the travel. Right. But, um, I think it, I think it, you know, it's just, these, these are both studs, like they're both stars on the rise. And so it's just, they're going to put on a show. They're going to throw around some big weights. And I think you're definitely going to see Chelsea getting into like the well up into the fives, like maybe not five fifty, but, um, we'll just have to see on the day, like what, what the future holds. So, all right. Anything else, Mike, uh, anything else you want to recap or talk about, um, on the, for that session? Um, no, I think this, if we all made our picks, I'm going to go with, uh, the upset and Chelsea. All right. And, and uh, Julia, who'd you pick? You know, this is so close. Um, I, I have to, I have to go with Duella because, um, she's demonstrated the higher total, but you know, 
Chelsea, she had a lot of hardship and she still pulled through and came in clutch um, on deadlift. So, I mean, I think it's going to be a fight. Um, I think if Luella can uh, figure out how to um, mitigate the, the slight hitching issue, though, um, I think she might have this. All right, and Sam? Uh, yeah, I got Luella and then Chelsea second. All right, then. So that is day one of uh, the junior and sub juniors at nationals coming up here in Scottsdale. And um, that's everything for that's all the women. So let's move into day two. Day two, we only have two sessions, so we don't have three sessions again. So that'll be nice. Um, and so we're starting out. These are all the men. And in fact, I kind of like the way that they got this split because they have um, day two starting off in the morning with session one is going to be all of the sub junior men. And then session two will be all of the juniors. Um, so, you know, that'll be kind of cool because we'll have kind of a rerun of last year in with the juniors. We'll have Anthony, we'll have Shane Nutt. Um, they'll be throwing around some huge weights. And then on the master side in that same session, we'll have like Lane Norton, Ellis McLean. Um, so this is kind of like something of a primetime session here in this session too. So let's kick it with, um, so we'll go ahead and run through all these sub juniors starting off with day two. Let's hit up uh, session one here, um, starting off with the men, 83 kilos. And we got in this weight class for the sub juniors, we got Omario Salinas, uh, Charlie Ferguson, Carlos Hicks Jr., and Joseph Tyler. So um, who's got their notes ready for this one? Okay, oh, yeah, Sam, hit it, Sam. Um, and he left out our boy Greg Jones from Buffalo. Um, can't leave Greg out Jones? our boy Greggy. Yeah. I just copy and pasted this uh, um, roster. Oh, I've, I forgot if he – is he a junior now? Yeah, um, yeah, he's a junior. He's not oh, he became a junior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Sorry, Greg. He's, I see he's on here. the sub-junior list. Yeah. Uh, he's on the yeah. sub-junior list. But no, maybe he's, uh, I think he's 19. I forgot. So I'm I'm looking at the uh, most recent roster. I copy and pasted it literally like 10 minutes before we started, oh, as you know. Okay. <laughs> and um, Drip Jones is in there as I see him is listed here as a junior in the 80s. Okay. So, okay. all right. Cool. So, anyways, go ahead. Sam. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, um, this is this is. Carlos, uh, Carlos's class to lose. Um, Carlos put up a monstrous like six fifty seven and a half total um, at a local meet, and uh, he's coming in with like the highest nominated total by almost a hundred keys, um, which is pretty absurd. And yeah, he's looking to take records. I think he's going to have one of the craziest performances of the day on the sub junior side. Um, and he's, I mean, yeah, he's he's just good at every lift and. He obviously has pretty insane genetic potential as well. Um, I'm really excited to see what he puts up. He's only 16. He's totaling like 657 uh, and a half as a sub junior, 83. So, yeah, I would be um, very excited to see. I I see him probably totaling maybe like 670, 680 um, at this rate. Yeah, that's amazing. That's awesome. Um, Mike Gold, you got anything? Yeah. So I mean. The only lifter I really saw that much about was also Carlos, and he's just going to put up something crazy. Everything mm -hmm. Sam said is true. I mean, his squat and deadlifts are both just insane. He's going to total in the upper sixes, and as far as I know, unless somebody's hiding something, none of these other 83s will be anywhere close. All right, and then Julia? Yeah, I mean, like, not only – has he totaled uh, 657 um, at 16? He, he's been totaling this. Uh, he's been putting up these insane totals for a little bit. Um, he did uh, 647.5 at 15. Um, I mean, this is just, you know, one of those standout lifters I think we're witnessing the rise of here. And, um, you know, obviously he has a lot of potential um, with putting up these totals as early as he has. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing um, you know just how much he improves here um, and yeah I, I think that we're going to be hearing a lot about him in the future. Yeah, I mean, sounds like um, he's going to you know make a big splash on the national stage here, Carlos Hicks Jr. That's going to be a name that people are talking about when we come after after this meet is over and going into the world's performance that he might have in in Romania. So we'll definitely be hyping him up for, for that. Um, all right, then next on the list. Okay. Whoops. I messed up. We're going, uh, to the 93 sub juniors. So hold on one second. I will grab 
this is a big weight class in the sub juniors. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and do it. Like, you know, like it will be at the competition. So we're doing all these sub juniors first. So in the 93s, in the sub juniors, we got Danny Hashem, Logan Christian, Marcus McFadden, Colin Baldwin, David Jackson, Benjamin Edelman, and David Srachin and Sean Duthie. So I'm sorry if I mispronounced any of those names, but yeah, th those are our sub juniors here for the 93s. What do you guys have for the, for this group? Mike, you got this one or, or oh, actually we got your boys in this one here, Sam, uh, a fellow media team member here, Marcus McFadden. So let's talk about, let's let Sam go first. Yeah. Uh, this is a really deep class. It was awesome to see this yeah. much participation, uh, especially out of sub juniors. Um, definitely some titles creeping up towards 600 kg, um, especially in David. Um, I, I won't, I don't want to butcher his last name. So I'm not going to risk saying it. Yeah. Um, but David side. Uh, as David Sirachin. asks, David asks, Sirachin will say, uh, literally 14 years old. Um, and he's totaling like five to seven and a half. Um, yeah, to doing that at that age, you know, you got a probably a bright future ahead of you, stick with it. Uh, so it'll be cool to see that. And a lot of these lifters are super young. We have a few 13 year olds. We got our boy David Jackson, who's 13. Um, he's yeah. from he's out in Buffalo. I love, I love David. He's amazing. Um, he's he's becoming a pretty strong kid. I mean, yeah, he's newly 13. Like, you know, he's still in like middle school. Um, you know, he's super passionate, super excited about the sport. I love watching him lift. Uh, it's super awesome. I get like, he's one of my favorite people to watch on Instagram whenever I see like, him post his PRs. Yeah. Um, love David. Uh, he's a super fun kid. He did that uh, at the Buffalo meet uh, with me out in October. Um, so it'd be cool to see him lift. And then uh, we got my boy um, and my athlete, Marcus McFadden. Um, Marcus in training has been, he hit 25 pounds more in squat than he did. Uh, when he took the 83 American record at high school Nats, he hit like 60 pound bench PR above what he hit at um, Nats. He like smashed a 315 bench with great ease and he was benching like 260 um, at high school Nats. And then wow. um, he pretty easily pulled 600 and with him, his taper usually adds around 16 to 22 pounds. Uh, we taper his fatigue really aggressively and it works really well. Um, so he's on track to PR 3 He'll be handled by um, my coach. Um, in the morning session, um, you know, he's going to be handled to a successful meet and we're going to follow the plan, probably just take a chill nine for nine day, ma major PR of the total and, uh, look to secure the world team spot, uh, for 93s. For sure. All right. That's a good opening take on that one. Yeah. I mean, he's nominated way above and that was a total he did at 83, right? Yeah, that this was where he did. That's what, that was where he did eighty three, and this is his ninety three debut. Um, yeah, and he's he's chilling in the class, eating Wendy's every day and stuff. So yeah, nice. That's awesome. No wonder I haven't heard from him in a minute. He's in a food coma. Um, all right, let's. Uh, who else has to take on this one? Um. Yeah. I mean, I just wanted to to mention, um, David. I think you sent me a video, um, of him deadlifting. Um like a month ago or so Paul um and it's yeah. just insane the progress he's making um you know he's obviously not gonna catch Marcus and Marcus is you know a phenomenal lifter in a league of his own especially now that he's moving up um to the 93s that's he's gonna put up something wild but um I think you know it, it's a good idea to keep keep an eye on David because I think he's gonna be doing some some huge things in the future um and yeah, his progress has just been at, at an exceptional rate. Yeah. 13 year old David Jackson, man, he'll be the talk of the town for sure. He gets hyped. He's fun. Um, he ran a couple I think he did two meets back to back in Buffalo. Yeah. So he's a good one. Fan favorite for sure. All right, Mike gold, what do you got for us? Yeah. So more of the same. Um, we got Marcus, mm -hmm. he's going to put up something massive moving up a weight class. So that's, I mean, uh, Sam already said how he put on some huge bench PR since since he's moved up. Um, then we got David Sorachin, who's got a pretty big squat, squats around 500 pounds. Um, so he's he's uh, making some progress. Not not I don't think yet in the 600s, but probably in the upper fives. And then we also have we also have um, uh, Danny Hashimpour. Mm -hmm. um with a he's coming with 577 and a half i can't really find much about him but that's a notable total coming in so we'll see what he brings 
Yeah, he competed at uh, high school nationals, and um, like he's a fiery competitor. He was like definitely in the ninety threes. He was in battle, like he was he was trying to win it, and um, yeah, so he, he's a good one for sure. Good coaches and everything like that. All right, so is there anything else you guys want to um, talk about with the ninety threes? All right, should be a massive performance from our man Marcus McFadden there. So let's kick it over to the uh, 105 sub juniors. And we got Cole Sherg, John Ingobertson, Ravi Khalsa, Braden Coy, and Roland Hoskins, a third. So who's got notes on this one? Go ahead, uh, Mike Gold. You got yours ready? Yeah. So here we got what looks to be a very good um, two way battle between Cole and Braden. Um, they both have uh, one 630 and 640 totals coming in. Um, so Cole's numbers, everything looks good. Uh, he's, looks like he's making a little bit of progress. I, I don't know anything crazy, but he's got the big squat advantage on, uh, Braden. So here it's an interesting case. We got the subtotal versus the deadlift guy. So I expect Cole to, uh, put up a big squat and a big bench and come into deadlifts with something like maybe a, uh, 30 to 40 kilo, uh, lead on subtotal, but then He's not a big puller, so he pulls like in the like the five like five thirty range, something like that. And Braden, I believe, has pulled over six hundred, so Braden is gonna come back on deadlifts. I don't know whether he's gonna have enough to win, but he's gonna have enough to at least put a scare. So my gut is saying that Cole is gonna win, but Braden's gonna pull something big to try to go for the win. Nice. I love that play-by-play -play type of analysis that you're bringing to us here, Mike Gold. Um, <laughs> I'll stop saying your last name. Uh, Sam, you got something you want to add to this one? Sam Sakura? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I concur with Mike for sure. Um, I got Cole winning, but Brayden has a master, a monster deadlift, and it'll be cool to see um, him probably load up for placing, assuming he's in that position uh, to do so. Um, but yeah, I, I just think Cole, usually the person with the squat and bench, uh, is going to be safer coming into deads and you know, safety is key, especially with these national meets. So yeah, I got Cole. For sure. All right. Um, Cole, uh, you know, he trains out at Brown's gym. Um, he's coached by Jim Brown directly and, um, he went head to head with James Kellerman there in high school Nats. and Kellerman is currently sitting with a 672.5. He's currently also in South Africa for bench worlds. So it'll be interesting to see because Cole will, and, and, you know, the Browns will be handling him and they will definitely be having to look at that number from, um, you know, James Kellerman to see if they could possibly have the final say there and get up to something like in that range, 672.5. If they can't, if they end up trying to pull something crazy, I mean, maybe there's a way that uh, Brady can come in, do something through the back door, but we'll see. Julia, what's your take on this class? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times people will say, and, and I agree that, you know, having the last poll is a tremendous advantage, but I think, you know, if you're, if you're solid and you, you, um, on squad and deadlift and you put up something that is, you know, slightly out of reach, it puts a lot of pressure on, on someone to pull something big. Um, and I think that, um, that's going to be what happens here. Um, yeah. so I, I, I have pull. Uh, yeah. And like I said, I mean, he's coached by Jim Brown. They'll be handled by him and Jim and Janelle. Uh, they both have like 20 years of U S national team coaching experience and whatnot. So they're not going to get put in a position where they're going to go out of pocket and try and do something that they can't do and leave the door open. If anything, it would just be that swing for the fence of possibly trying to get Kellerman's total. But, um, you know, Cole, he, he's only been lifting for like, like a year or something. I think he's, I think Jim Brown um, was talking about like that. He's only been on the team for a minute and his numbers are going up like crazy. So I think he'll be really happy if he makes it onto the, the U S national team headed to the North American championships in the Cayman islands. That would be a great spot for him uh, unless he's put enough on his total to break Kellerman. Um, otherwise they'll probably just take what's there and just chip what, what Braden does uh, put up just enough to put it out of reach and win that. So, all right, let's uh, move on now to the 120s, unless anyone, you don't have anything else there. Um, here, we got another Browns gym lifter. Um, man, Browns gym is bringing a team out here. Um, we got Jacob, Jacob Breckenridge, and that's, 
he is unopposed. So as long as Jim and Janelle do their job and he doesn't bomb out, we got a national <laughs> champion on our hands. Again, you know, that's the saying where Brown's gym is where champions train. So they're going to have one on their hands there. Do anyone want to talk anything about him? James Breckenridge? Nope. All right, then. Um, Mike, you got nothing on that? Okay. Yeah, I couldn't find it. Yeah, because I think he's only done one meet. I think it was that most recent meet that he did in. Uh, uh, yeah, he did one meet a month ago, and he totaled uh, six forty-two. But I don't see any other meets, and I can't find any sort of social media or anything. So. Yeah, yeah, he's again. That's that Browns gym vibe. They're not a big on social <laughs> media stuff. Um. So yeah. All right then. Let's. If we don't have anything else there, congrats to Jacob. And then let's move on here to the 120 plus sub juniors. We got Ariel Perez and Zavai Milton. I think I might have got that close to accurate. So, um, what kind of information you guys got on these two? Sam, you know you know these. Uh, I don't know them well. Um, there's not there's not that much about them, but it looks like Ariel will be in a, a position to comfortably win. Um, but uh, Zavaya may as well, and especially with this, uh, with this weight class, like, you know, there's no cutting in anything. So really all you got to focus on is like lifting and, you know, managing external factors. There's not really a, um, potentially like a dieting or cutting into a component. So, you know, they can both have fantastic days and really just worry about the lifting, but yeah, I think, I think Ariel will comfortably win. For sure. I just checked out Ariel on Instagram and I, I remember him now. Um, he's like a stud football player that's like getting recruited in college it, yeah. teams and stuff. So he's not posting too much, but on powerlifting and whatnot. But man, when we start getting these 17 year old stud uh, football players coming over to the sport, yeah. like this is exciting for what the future might hold. Julia, do you have something? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't um, know either of these lifters too well, but you know, um, somebody who's in, in, uh, football and playing another sport and putting up these kind of totals um, usually you know they're not terribly focused on power lifting and so yeah. you know if they were um, I think that you're able to make a lot of progress and potentially be one of those people that we see um, you know being a big deal in the future um, yeah all right Mike you got anything yeah so um Uriel I mean like we said he's the big uh football player it's always nice you see the big boy come out for squats without any knee sleeves he doesn't need it so yeah. uh it looks like from his um his meat he did recently that he has more he has more in the tank on on squats and um probably more on deadlifts um he doesn't have a particularly big deadlift um but he's got some more squats and probably maybe I'm not sure more on bench. Uh, most of his benches are a little bit more football style benches. Nothing, uh, nothing really comparable to a, a competition bench. So you can't really judge off that. But I would say we'll probably see something like a 600 total, which should comfortably uh, give him the win. All right, then. Yep. Sounds like everyone's in consensus there on Uriel. All right, so we're down to the last session, day two, the second session. Um, this is where we're going to run back through all these weight classes again, but now we're talking with the juniors. So um, we'll kick it over to the 83 kilo juniors. We got David Harico, Connor Heim, Ryan Adami, um, Ken Nguyen, Alex Sador, Evan Gonsorchich, and Drippy Greg Jones. So um, who has this weight class? Who wants to talk about this one first? We got some studs in here. Sam, let's kick it. You're muted or something. Your audio is not coming. Damn, you had like the best audio up to this point. Too. There we go. Yes. We go. Anyways, uh, sorry. Ken uh, is an 83, is super comfortable. He used to cut uh, a massive amount uh, for 74, 75. Um, you know, best lifter at USA PLC Nats 22. Um, and he, you know, at his first meet as 83, he had a statement meet. He chilled 737 and a half, and that was including like he missed lifts. So like if he hits his lifts, uh Ken's due for a really big total. Um, I think Ken's gonna pretty easily win this class. Um, if he just hits his lifts, he's been hitting like four or two bench with ease in training pretty consistently and some other big numbers as well. Um and you know, he doesn't post most of his training, but I that's usually a good um indicator with him. And he also just graduated college and stuff, so he has more important things on his plate 
but uh, Ken's definitely looking to win here. Um, and then between uh, Sador and Heim, uh, Sador's training has really been on an uptick recently, um, you know, working with John Song. He had a weird meet at uh, Open Nats where he uh, said he had food poisoning and, you know, squats really went nowhere near what he uh, had planned. But if he could hit in the 600s on squat, uh, mid to high sixes on dead and um, just hit a decent bench. I know he's had some issues in terms of injury and uh, the elbow death stuff on bench. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if he can kind of clean all that up, um, he could definitely have finally a really good meet. Uh, that he's been waiting for. Um, but Connor Heim also has been having some really great training as well. It's going to be a battle between them. Um, I'm going to give the edge to Sador just because of how much experience he has. You know, he's been on the world uh, platform now and so many national platforms, won national titles. Um, so I'm going to give the edge to Sador and then uh, give Heim third. So I'll do Ken first, Sador second, and then Heim third. Who's Ken coached by? Uh, Marty. I believe. Marty Agos. That's yeah. right. Oh yeah. Marty yeah. crew down there in Texas. All right. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Um, Mike gold, <laughs> you got one. Sorry. So, yeah. So I'm going to, I agree with a lot of what uh, Sam said. So I remember uh, commentating for Ken at CNATS against uh, Jeffrey back when they were both in the 74s. <laughs> that was a good battle then. Now he's moved up a class. So he actually can comfortably be in class. And he put up a, uh, I believe, like a 20 kilo total PR, his first meet in the 83s. Um, I've been watching his training. He looks to, like he's hitting PRs on everything. I have him totaling uh, 760, which, if he does, is puts him out of reach for both Alex and, and um, for Alex and Connor. So I think, assuming Ken does what he should, the battle's for second. And in that battle, I'm going to have to go with my boy Alex. Um, his training's looking good. His training's probably looking the best it has uh, uh, since last in a year when he did that crazy mock meet. I mean, we're not we're not at that total, but uh, his squat looks to be he looks to be good for uh, the low 600s. He hit a uh, 584 triple that he did not post um, last block, and bench bench is still uh, shaky he had a, he's had a, dealing with a, a pec injury for a while and the bench step so i think we're looking like around the same like 150 155 range that he's been stuck at um he only hit 145 at uh open nats but he was he was uh sick so i would say somewhere in that 155 range and then deadlift is looking good really good he hit 292 just hit 292 um i think he's good for somewhere in the 310 range, which would be an all time like uh, competition PR. I think, I think we're looking in like the 745 range on a good day, which should probably have him take second. I, Connor, I haven't seen as much of his training. Um, I don't know. I don't, he doesn't post so much training. So I've seen some, but I think he is the underdog here. So I think it's going to come down to executing. If everyone executes, I think we're going to go Ken, Alex, Connor. All right, same order there as uh, as Sam and Julia. What do you got? Yeah, um, I have the same order too. Um, I think Ken is pretty, um, you know, solidly um, ahead here with most potential um, for a big total and, and improvement. I think you know moving up um, is you know I mean that's a big advantage, and he already he already has the highest total, so. I'm going to go with him uh, first. And then Alex Sidor, um, you know, he's he's been having a little bit of a tough time here, but his training has been looking up um, now that he's with John Song. And um, yeah, I, I'm sure he wants to redeem himself from what happened at Nationals. That was, that was a pretty unfortunate um, thing. So um, I have, you know, all of them doing well and like, Mike and Sam said, if they all do well, it's probably going to look like um, Ken, Alex, and Connor. But, you know, Connor, uh, if you're listening, um, maybe this is, uh, this is the motivation to prove us wrong here. So, yeah. All right. Good takes there. Um, I'm a huge Marty Agos fan. So, 
I'm excited to see his lifters. They always seem to perform. They always get the room hyped. There's always a bunch of fans, you know, in the, in the room for them and everything and they get going. And then, um, the, on, you know, Sador to me, his training, he just looks way more fired up than he has been in a while. Um, like you said, I said, John song working with him, but he just seems fired up. Like his numbers are going up and stuff. So I just want to see him put something good together, have fun, have a good meet, not have to worry about bench depth. You know, we got called on bench depth at nationals. That's always going to throw you off and be pretty weird. So uh, hopefully he's got all that stuff squared away. He can throw down a, a total. That will be like one of his best totals recently, probably his best total recently, maybe a PR total, but, um, and then, and then just build from there, you know, because um, he's obviously really talented. He's someone who's going to be in the sport for a long time to come. And so, you know, pumped to see him just fired up and having fun. Um, <clears throat> all right. If with that, let's move on to the 93 junior men. We got a surprise entry here uh, that we didn't have in our notes, but well, I'm going to read down the roster here. We got Andrew Cargill Jr. coming over from the equip side. And we got Aiden Raider, Tank Lunsford, Logan Hedgety, Aiden Brown, Peyton Johnson, Dylan Hoy, Brandon Combs, Travers Benoit, uh, Philip Trong, and Shane Nutt rounding them out. This is another big weight class, stacked weight class. Um, so uh, who wants to take this one first? Yeah. Um, I can. You uh, start? Sam, you go first. Word. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm uh, good friends with Aiden and Shane. I train with Aiden. Uh, he lives near me. I also have Denny's with him. Um, Aiden's injured right now and he's been, you know, he's been dealing with really weird fatigue patterns and such for a long time to the point where it's like almost impossible to like properly, you know, peak his performance to a day and peak his training and gauges abilities on each day. And, um, he's been dealing with like chronic fatigue issues and stuff and like an oblique injury. Um, and all those things combined, it's just unlikely that he's going to like put up what he put, uh, in the gym with that eight, 12 and a half gym total in February. It's very unlikely he'll come super close to that. Um, and he basically, he said on a story, like even today yeah. that he's going to like take the meat chilled, uh, which sucks. Cause I was very excited to see a full power Aiden versus Shane battle. I think that'd be awesome. Um, and I, th I think Shane will probably end up running away with the class. Um, I mean, it's friggin' Shane nut. He just keeps on getting stronger and stronger and he just doesn't really stop. Um, Shane's training has been going super well, obviously. And, um, he's just super focused and he, he knows what he has to do. I think Shane will pretty easily win and then i think aiden will uh, take a chill second um and then i think brandon combs his training's been heating up it's possible brandon combs competes with aiden per second depending on um aiden's injury fatigue and what strength he brings to the day um so yeah all right over under shane nut goes eight ten. Oh, over way so, over so there you yeah, go way He's, over everybody's saying <laughs> it so his best total is 795, right? So he's, yeah. yeah. I think the only way he doesn't go over 810 is if he does what he did at Worlds, which is miss his, take a big jump and miss his second and third deadlifts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the only way. And, I mean, he's pretty much a lock for making it onto the U.S. national team, assuming he doesn't bomb out, um, puts up these numbers. He's going to be in the top, uh, you know, good lift points and whatever, top nine. Maybe he had, maybe he leaves something in the tank and doesn't try to go 100% all out. What, is that his style, Sam? No, I think I think Shane will give it his all. Um, I, he's, like, he kind of does it, like, for a performance aspect, too, I think, yeah. kind of like the crowd watching and stuff. Uh, I'd be, I would be shocked if we saw Shane, like, sandbag a meat or anything i think he i think he gives it his all and so what what do you project his total uh probably like 830 8, wow. 835 that's what i'm thinking so 35 kilo pr um he doesn't yeah. compete a lot i feel like he's been kind of uh -huh. jones into competing he was with he was handling in scottsdale or in uh at high school nats in scranton he was handling in buffalo um at this meet that we've been you know talking about in january um, and I feel like he's just got the itch, like he's going to want to go out there and yeah. throw something down. Cause at all those meets, uh -huh. he did like SBD training days the day after and like threw down uh -huh. some big number, like that night in Buffalo, um, uh -huh. um, after Anthony competed and whatnot, he like threw down a huge number in the gym there at Vin's gym, Kenmore barbell. Um, so yeah. Um, Julia, what's your take on this class? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, Shane is, is going to win here. Um, and I'm really excited to see what he puts up. I know, um, Aiden was, you know, he was a while ago uh, putting up some pretty high totals. I think he had an 8, 12 uh, gym total, but I am I have not been aware of um, the chronic fatigue issues. So I think 
you know, I mean, that that's a that's a massive issue going into a national level meet. And I think uh, Shane's training has been looking really strong. And I think I think he's got it. Yeah. All right. And then. Oh, and above. Yeah, I, I think well above. Ten, so. So, yeah. yeah, so well above. All right. Kick it over to Mike. Yeah. So we'll start Break with down for my. Us. Yeah, we'll start with talking about my coach Shane. So uh, his training's looking good. Um, I expect a small PR on squats. Um, I'm not sure about bench. Bench looks around the same as it's been, but deadlift is the big thing because his last meet, he missed um, 337 twice and only pulled, I believe, 317 for his opener. So we're talking about potentially a 25 kilo deadlift PR maybe more. So I think he pulls somewhere in the 750 to 760 range and totals, I will say between 825 and 830. That's what I'm going to go with and walks away with the wind because like uh, Sam mentioned, Aiden is dealing with some stuff. I'm not sure exactly what, because I looked at his training and his training still, while not as good as when he did that 812 SPD day, which wasn't an SPD day because the deadlift was from yeah. two blocks there. But, um, yeah. but like, so I've looked at his training and it still looks good. Like he still looks for, like to be good for a big pull. Like he had a pretty easy 310 pull. Like I still think he's to pull somewhere maybe like in the 330 range and bench looks better than it ever has. So I don't expect yeah. any, I expect somewhere in like the 170 range on bench. Um, on squat, I, he doesn't look to be anywhere near his top end. Uh, I believe he's hit 297 in competition. He does not look anywhere mm -hmm. near that now probably more like 285. So I would have him going somewhere in like a, in these like 785 range and probably taking second, but be having a close battle with um, both Peyton Johnson, which we haven't mentioned and Brandon Combs, both of those, I think both of those have potential to, to, if Aiden isn't fully there and takes a little more chilled, I think both of them can battle. I think they're both going to total 760 plus maybe 760s maybe 770s on a great day so i think um i think if aiden takes it really chilled then second is up for grabs if not it'll be a uh, real battle for third place all right anyone else have anything you want to say um just just looking over this list a little bit tank lunsford you know we met him down in polk county um he's one of our polk, polk county boys like sam sakura who's already punched his ticket out to uh, University World Cup, which will be in Slovenia. So he's already got a national, uh, international platform secured. Um, I know that he's got more on that total because he yeah. missed some lifts. He missed some lifts down there in Polk County. He's a strong kid. Um, he had trouble making weight, but that wasn't that long ago. So maybe he's kind of on body weight now. So we'll see if he can do something. And then I just want to shout out again, just because I happen to know uh, Logan Hedgerty and Aiden Brown. Those are both Brown's gym lifters. So Brown's gym is like fully representing on these juniors. They're coming in with a lot of, uh, a lot of lifters here. So shout out to those guys and yeah. All right. Well then if no one else has anything else that they want to add to this weight class, let's kick it on up to the one Oh five juniors. All right. You ready for this one? And in the one Oh five juniors, we got Ryan Carter, Nicholas Schurz, Michael Bosquez, Sam Sakura and Anthony McNaughton and Josh Foote. So we got some studs in here. This is a pretty stacked class. Yeah. So so this is uh, a stacked oh. class. But let's start with uh, the best 105 junior in the world. <laughs> Sam Sakura, what's your take on, on your own performance? What are you going to do? Oh, um, I don't, do I don't notes? like to, I don't speak on my own performance, what I'll do, but I'll PR the total and, I will load what I have to do to pull for second. Um, okay. I won't elaborate further, but yeah, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll do well though. Okay. All right. You're ready. You're feeling good. You're looking good. Oh, I'm, I'm feeling damn good. All right. So nice. yeah. Nice. And so this will be your third meet, right? Um, Cause you did um, what you did October in Buffalo. Oh, oh yeah. Same, third like, Pop, third Pop to America meet. And Reese, I'm saying like this year, like oh, in the yeah. last like 12 months, right? Like, so, oh, yeah, yeah. So oh, in the last 12 months, this will be my fourth, yeah. Fourth meet. So, yeah. So, um, give us a progression on what you did. You did, you went out to Buffalo in October, then you went to Polk County, handle business, secured the dub, yeah. got the plane ticket ready for Slovenia. And then, yep. uh, so yeah, how's it progressed? 
Uh, been going pretty well. I took PRs on all three compared to my past meet uh, today um, and Friday. Um, pretty chill. Uh, I'll probably take even. I might. I'll probably bench a meet PR. Probably pull a meet PR. Squat near the meet PR. PR the total. Um, awesome. Yeah. All right. So we got more out of him than he wanted to give us. But all right, we hyped him up enough. All right. So break it down for us, then, Sam. Your competitors. Uh, um, Anthony McDonough, um, that's my boy. He's going to, I mean, he's going to do something crazy. Uh, probably total over 2000 pounds. Um, he, his training has been going crazy. He hides a lot of it, but, um, and a lot of some damn good training. Um, Anthony's going to do something really spectacular. I think, uh, on the national stage, especially, which will mean a lot. Um, and then, um, Nick Shazer um, and Josh, but uh, I have them both mute on Instagram because I'm competing against them, so I don't follow their training. But they're both beasts. Uh, Josh did a like a, I think it was a squat and science meet, um, and put up a pretty beastly total. Um, and uh, I don't I don't follow Nick stuff too much, but uh, I know he also basically all like the exact same total coming in. Uh, so it'll be cool to see. And then I don't I don't know much about Ryan Carter. But um, yeah. So I think Anthony will win. That's a pretty big three-way battle for a second. All right, man. So you got yourself in the heat of battle here between you and uh, Shers. Shers, shout out. He's only 19 years old. He just aged up into this class. Um, he's also Brown's Gym again. Like the, this is basically sponsored by Brown's Gym today. This podcast <laughs> brought to you by Where Champions Train. Um, but yeah, they're bringing a full squad, so that's exciting. All right, Julia, you want to break it down and then we'll, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, Anthony Rinan is just, you know, a phenomenal lifter, uh, 900 kilo entry total. Um, I'm just excited to see what he puts up. I think, you know, anytime you get to see him lift, um, is, you know, it's a good day. Um, and then I think Sam, uh, you know, I'm not going to pick against you. So, um, I have Sam in second. Um, and yeah, uh, I think, um, like you said, he's going to PR, uh, his, his total here. Um, I don't really know much about Nick or Josh, but it's, you know, very close. Um, and I think that the, the battle for second is going to be, you know, another really exciting thing to watch besides just, you know, the ridiculous numbers that Anthony puts up, um, a good battle <laughs> is always fun to watch. And, you know, this, this weight class, class has both those things. So it's going to be, it's going to be really fun. Yeah. What a stacked class here. All right, Mike, who do you got? Well, I mean, everybody, I believe, uh, is going with Anthony, uh, yeah. expecting to total something insane. Uh, I think, I think he's going to put a total that makes every open 105 on the map watch. I think I have him going between 915 and 920, well over 2K. Mm -hmm. um, besides for that, though, it, we have a very good battle for second. We got Sam, we got Josh, and we got um, and we got Nicholas. So and also Ryan Carter, but I didn't really find any information on Ryan Carter, so I'll stick with the other three. So like Sam just said, expect some PRs. Um, so I've I've seen Josh's uh, training and I've trained with him a couple of times. Um, I expect a bench PR from him. Um, squat doesn't seem to be uh, moving anywhere anywhere crazy. So I would say uh, he totaled seven seventeen last meet. Um, somewhere in like the seven thirty range is what I expect. And um, Nicholas, I have projected. Uh, in like the 720s. So um, I think probably all three of them will probably be in that 730 range. So whichever one executes is going to be the one that wins. So we'll see. Or the one that comes second. <laughs> Can't forget about yeah. Anthony. Yeah. yeah, wins the battle. Wins the battle. Yeah. Um, this is super exciting. I mean, we got a, we got a battle here. I mean, we got someone who's like, you know, capable of winning worlds in the open possibly here with Anthony McNaughton. And then we got a three-way battle between what you would, the really good totals, what you'd normally expect coming out of juniors. So I'm pumped for that. Um, here's what's the over under on uh, Anthony going. So Emil Norling, just to put it, you know, one worlds, one Sheffield at the, at the one Oh fives, 
um, and total 915. His best total ever is a 928.5. So over under that Anthony breaks 928.5. Under. Yeah, barely, but yeah. Julia? Yeah, I mean, that's a big ask. I'm, I'm going to say slightly under as well. All right, well, he did that at a local meet, so but his best total on an international platform uh, looks like it's like 917.5. Um, at Euros 2021, will Anthony break 917.5? I think he could. Um, I don't know if you guys are watching, but last year, uh, me and Vin decided to load 365 for Anthony's third to attempt to pull for the win, like a uh, yeah. 35 kilo jump. I think this year, we're getting closer to that being a real attempt. And everyone knows his squad. I mean, he squatted 750, he benched over 500 yeah. pounds. I think. Deadlift is, is a little bit his most inconsistent lift. Like day to day, it can be like some weeks it's 30 kilos stronger than other weeks. So I think if his dead on a good deadlift day, he can pass that 917 by a meal. Mm -hmm. All right. So over under, you're saying yes or no, Mike? I'm going to say yes. All right. If you want. Uh, I never want to bet against Anthony McNaughton. Uh, <laughs> but it's say, right in that uh, wheelhouse. Yeah, he's just so damn close. Um, he's probably, I'm going to exactly say over because he's my boy, but that, that literally might be exactly what he totals. So, yeah. yeah. And Julia? Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think he, I think he's going to get pretty close to matching that exactly um, if he has a, so, yeah. Yeah, and just, you know, just to put it into perspective, um, Emil Norling won Worlds last year in South Africa with a 912.5. Um, so I think we all could say he's definitely going to do that or higher. Um, go back and listen to the Anthony McNaughton interview that I did and um, on the Power of the America podcast. I believe he says 920 is within range. So we'll see. Yeah. It's going to be right in there. He's got John Song. He's got a bad taste in his mouth. He already put up, like, he, he cakewalked through that 900 total that he did in Buffalo. Um, and so, and we know he's going way above that. He's got Susie Gary behind him, handling him. Right. So he's got kind of everything there. I guess one thing would be to say, I mean, he said he's going to put on a show. He said it on the mm -hmm. podcast, go back and listen to it. He says he's going to put on a show. He's not going to sandbag. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to say the man's going to break all of Emil's numbers and just go straight up nine 30. Let's, let's put it way out there. Anthony, I believe in you, my man. All right. <laughs> I don't. I don't think he's thinking a meal. I think he wants the out total, whatever um, Mikey does at world. Yeah. I think he wants to yeah. show that he's the number one in the U S uh -huh. yeah, but I still think he's going to, you know, they're going to have to be somewhere in that nine fifteen range. If a meal can get back up to that nine twenty eight ish, which he did at a local meet in, or he did it. Yeah. I, I haven't met exactly nine twenty. That's what my numbers have. Yeah. Exactly All right. Awesome. So just for in perspective, so people who are watching this, you know, whenever you're, you're taking a look and you're seeing these numbers that Anthony's putting up, this is like, he's going up against some of the best in the world in terms of these numbers. Um, these numbers would be competitive winning worlds. So that's open worlds. Right. So, um, and then of course, you know, uh, he's looking for that rematch with Coco. I don't know if Coco is still a junior or not. I know he's got a bad yeah. taste in his mouth. He wants to beat him. Is he Mike? Yeah. Yeah, I know Vin is fired up. Um, you know, Vin will be the the coach, the junior uh, world's coach for the for the raw team. They're all fired up. So, and I mean, just notice how many times he did his total in Buffalo. Sam did a total in Buffalo. Like we're talking about, Joy did a total. Like, if if you want to be like a national level competitor, you go compete at those meets in Buffalo, or go to Brown's Gym where the champions train. Right? Like it seems like we're this whole thing has been an ad for Kenmore Barbell Brown's Gym. Um, those are good local meets out there. They got a lot of strong people out that way. All right, let's move on to, unless there's anything else here. No, let's move it on up to the one twenties. Um, we got three lifters, Brandon Todd, Ramar, Paul Harayo, and then Brandon Kaminsky. So, um, who's ready to roll with these? Um, I Do start us off. Uh, Paul is local to me. Uh, he's a beast. Uh, he did the power build meet recently. Um, Paul went like head to toe with uh, Wheeze at 2019 CNATS, one of the craziest battles ever. Um, and Paul is a competitor. Uh, he's a super strong dude. He's kind of come back from some like longer term injuries and stuff. And he's really building some training momentum, I would say. But um, Brandon Todd, who we saw 
uh, did that meet recently and he did like an 882 total. He used to be a, uh, he came from USPA and I know you're noting that his total increased, but uh, that's also because he competes to 120 here and did 110 as a USPA lifter. Um, but that, I mean, yeah, Brendan Todd is, uh, he's, he's a beast. I think he probably will end up running away with it. When I saw his beat recap, I didn't know he was coming to PA, but I was like shocked. I was like, I mean, yeah, he's gonna, he's coming for, he's coming for everything. He's going to come for like a crazy total, uh, come nationals. Um, definitely like, you know, an unconventional IPF type lifter, like transferring from USPA coached by like a typical USPA, a WRPF type coach um and mm -hmm. he's a he's a beast um i mean his bench is crazy his squat's crazy and his deadlift's crazy for transitioning that stiff bar uh, i think brendan's gonna win but uh paul's definitely gonna put up a crazy fight and he's probably gonna come near his best total ever but i think brendan's gonna come out on top all right man thank you for bringing that um mike you got anything to add yes i think i think uh Sam was just spot on. I mean, this is Brent, Brendan uh, Todd coming in with 882. Looks like he can total even more than that. I expect him probably to push to around 900. So I don't think even on Paul's best day, he's anywhere near that. But I do think um, Paul's training is picking up a little bit. Um, he totaled 805 um, at that power build meet that they were talking about. His best total ever is 817. I think it can pass his best total ever. I think we can see him uh, on a good day total somewhere in like the, the 830s maybe. Um, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near Brendan, but I think it'll be a big total. Um, potentially, I don't know the exact numbers, but potentially might be enough for uh, secondary selection to even the world's team based off uh, the alternates. But I think he, I think his training's good. I expect a uh, competition PR. And I expect Brendan to be trying to look at any total as the only thing. Him. All right. That's tank strength on Instagram. For those of you following, guess where he put up his qualifying total for power of the America at Brown's gym. All right. God, we, we, this is, we got to get a spot, some, some t-shirts from Brown's gym after this, for sure. When we see uh, Jim and Janelle there in Scottsdale. All right, Julia, what do you got? Yeah, I mean, like I said um, at the beginning, um, Brendan Todd, I mean, that's, you know, a monster total. Um, it's, it, I I haven't really seen a lot of his training, but um, I think, you know, he can, he can do even better than that. I think it's going to be interesting seeing him and uh, Anthony lifting in the same uh, flight here. Um, mm -hmm. So that that should be really fun to watch just some monster lifts from both of them and um paul you know he's he's close um but i i don't think that he's going to to catch brendan but it, it'll be it'll be nice to see him put up a pr total um like if what mike said is true he can do better than eight seventeen point five. then um that'll be nice to see all right then so those are your 120s. Let's bump it up to the 120 pluses, the unlimited category, the super heavyweights. 120 plus juniors. We got Ryan Schofield, Trey Forrest, and Jason Rauscher. So who knows these kids and um, who wants to go first? Okay. If no one answers, it's Mike Gold because <laughs> we know he's got the spreadsheet ready. Okay. So on Jason, um, he is a big squatter. Uh, he's got like something like a 340 squat or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. He did he build meat for, for PA. He just like put some a uh, couple of attempts in just to qualify. So his PA numbers are nothing to look at. Um, he's got a pretty nice bench uh, in the upper fours. Uh, I think I think he may have hit like 465 or 475. Um, I expect him to squat in the mid to upper sevens, bench in the upper twos, and deadlift somewhere in the mid sixes, probably total somewhere in the 840 to 850 kilo total range, and walk away with this uh, quite easily. All right. Julia, you got something? 
Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know a ton about any of these lifters, but um, Jason, you know, I mean, this is a, this is a monster um, entry total he put up, um, and I think um, that's going to be fun to watch. A lot of, you know, there's, there's so many um, lifters in this session who are above 800 uh, kilos, and um, I mean, that's just wildly impressive for uh, junior lifters. So, yeah, I have him comfortably uh, taking this one. All right. And then Sam. Yeah. No disagreement from me. Um, I think Jason will run away with it, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it'll be much of a competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the only wrench I'd throw in the works here is that Jason um, just posted on his Instagram story that he's like in the hospital. Um, he's gonna have to stay overnight. Um, this was just in the last 24 hours. It's still on a story. Now I know he posted something the other day that he was in, uh, that he had to go to the hospital uh, again or something. And I think I messaged him and I was like, you know, get well soon. And he says, uh, yeah, he says it happens. I'll just get stronger next year. So I don't know what his, uh, status may be as far as like, if he's actually going to show up and try to put, throw, throw these numbers up or what, but, um, he's still, he hasn't withdrawn. So I got the most recent roster. He hasn't withdrawn. So hopefully he'll be there, but if not, um, what do you all know about Trey Forrest and Ryan Schofield? I'll tell you, Ryan Schofield competed twice. Where? Buffalo. You know, it's only one of two places. <laughs> Buffalo, been, right? Yeah. He's a stud, and he he did it at 120, which he cut to, and then now he's mm -hmm. in a 120 plus. He made a weight class change on this, so he's moving up to 120 plus. Um, and then Trey Forrest, super strong kid. I think he was getting coached by Jesus for a minute. Um, he might be a Nebraska boy as well. And super strong, like competed at some meets in Nebraska. Everything is going up and up. He's one of the youngest here. We're talking junior, so they can be up to what, 23 years old. Yeah. And uh, he's only 18. So he just aged into this class. Um, he's been super strong, been posting PRs left and right um, on Instagram as well. So um, I'm excited to see him in person. And if Oops. Jason, if Jason doesn't show up and Ryan doesn't have to cut, um, maybe Ryan will be able to challenge. I mean, he's got a little bit of a gap to, you know, best totals there, but if he could, you know, um, if he doesn't have to, if the cut was what was driving his totals down, then maybe he could handle, I mean, I know he's coached by Vin as well. So, you know, he'll be waiting right there in the wings. If anyone slips up for sure. Um, is that throw a wrench? Anyone have anything else they want to add to that? Yeah. So I have some notes on Trey. Uh, he's very interesting training, like a lot of bands and stuff like yeah, that. Reverse not, bands. Yeah. Not your conventional, uh, like IPF style lifting, but, um, or at least not your, your unequipped uh, American IPF style of thing, but he's got a big squat on him. Um, I think he's like approaching 700 pounds. I don't know if he'll hit it. I don't think he'll hit it this meet, but I would say he's somewhere in that range. Um, and he has a solid uh, bench and deadlift as well. So I think he has, I think he's going to take second. Um, if Jason's there, hopefully if everything's good. Um, and if Jason's not there, I think he will be the favorite. And I, would expect him to total somewhere in the upper 700s, 760, 770. Um, so, yeah. All right. That sounds good. Um, so anyone else have anything they want to add on to this weight class? Otherwise, we'll move into our uh, closing wrap up here. Nothing. All right. So takeaways and wrapping up, um, any, any points you want to reiterate after we went through all this, um, anything else you want to add, like, you know, what we've been talking about, go ahead, Sam, you got anything? Um, really nothing. I think we did a super thorough job. Uh, it's definitely going to be super exciting. I love, you know, lifts with young lifters. Usually they got family coming out, friends coming out. It'll definitely be a super cool environment and we were excited to meet some of these people finally and see some other uh, friends as well. Uh, it's definitely gonna be a fun weekend for sure. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, Julia. Yeah. I mean, I think there's just going to be a lot of battles and a lot of, um, you know, I think like Sam said with, with, you know, uh, younger lifters, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of hype around some of these lifters. I think there's going to be a lot of improvements. Um, I think, yeah, it's just, it's just going to be really cool to see what happens. I think it's going to, you know, it's pretty unpredictable. And that's one of the great things about um, the sub juniors and juniors. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Mike, you got anything? Actually, just one thing I want to add. I, I forgot to mention it. I feel bad because nobody mentioned uh, when we were talking about like how all the good lifters in the 93s, I don't think anyone mentioned uh, 
Philip Truong, who yeah. I think is also going to be in that battle. So yeah, he I is. forgot to mention him. So just putting it out there. Um, right. And anything to add? Um, yeah, just to wrap up, I guess we're going to see a lot of um, battles in some way classes and, and others. We're just going to see some incredible performances. And I think it's great just to see all these young lifters, these 15 year old, 16 year old sub juniors who are competing and uh, showing their interest in uh, taking to an international and national stage. And uh, I think we just got to continue um, trying to grow the sport through the youth. For sure. That's a good point. All right. And then a um, couple of things I, I would just add. Well, first of all, is like, just we're starting on a bang, right? Like 63s. We're talking about that as being like one of the tightest weight class, absolute battle. Mm -hmm. And then we're, we got stacked sessions all the way through to the final session where we're going to see Anthony McNaughton, like put up some crazy, probably best total in the world ish uh, <laughs> level total. And he'll be doing it right alongside uh, with some of the other studs that are going to be at this competition, like Ellis McLean and Lane Norton. Like they're all going to be happening in that same day two session two. So it's kind of a grand finale session, primetime session. So I just like the fact that we're from, we start off with a bang. We got good lifters all the way through. We got massive individual performances like Marcus McFadden in the middle of this. And then we're going to end it off on a bang as well. So um, it's stacked all the way, all the way through. It's going to be exciting. Um, other thing I would just want to mention briefly is like, if you're looking at some, I'm looking at the IPF scores, IPF good lift points, which you got to be in the top nine IPF good lift points, making on the U S national team. And I'm just looking at some of the people who've done it already at either high school nationals, university nationals, or open nationals. I can break some news right here and now that Jessica Espinal has told me that if she gets the invite, if she can, she will go to junior worlds. So she's sitting with a 116 IPF good lift points, one of the best 47 kilo lifters in the world. And so we might get to see her you know, a, a, about a week and a half after this meeting in Scottsdale, she'll be throwing down with Heather Connor and Turbo Tiff and Malta. No, and then no matter what happens there, she's going to possibly be going out to Romania. Um, if we can get her on the team, it just kind of depends on if enough people lock in that secured spot, which is best total in their weight class and top nine IPF good lift points. If there's any spot open, she will be the highest alternate for sure. So that's something to take a look at for sure. Um, super exciting to see. Don't forget she's a junior. I mean, she's super young. And, uh, you know, we know she's going to, she's got a shot at winning open worlds. Maybe she'll run it back to back and win junior worlds as well. Um, and then <clears throat> the other thing that I want to mention is just some super standout performances that of lifters that are not going to be at this meet that, but whose totals and IPF points that these women are going to have to be competing with. And there's really only one name on that list. And that's Eleni Guerrera. Um, who's got a 90 IPF good lift score that she put up at high school nationals. Um, she has such a, a ridiculous total. Um, so she's got, she out totaled everyone up three weight classes up at high school nationals. I mean, we're talking about a generational type talent here. Um, you know, she's a 57 and um, yeah, so she's got huge numbers to put up. And then the other one, you know, Luella and Chelsea both have high IPF good lift points. They're both 89, 86. We talked about them. They're both going to be here. And then the other one I want to mention was Jess Jessica Haggerty um, in a 52 kilo weight class um, at high school nationals, which she also put up at 83 I IPF good lift points. So, I mean, these are two women that are waiting in the wings and will it'll be very, and they're not, and they're not going to be there. Um, Jessica as well. So three women that, that have huge totals that are not going to be there, but we'll kind of wait and see where the dust settles. And um, it looks like Eleni is also going to be a sure one for the sub junior team sitting really high on IPF killer points. And looks like Jessica Haggerty will be right there because uh, Luella and um, you know, and, and uh, Chelsea are, are at this competition. So we'll, we'll get them on the team as well. So super exciting. I mean, it's looking like the sub junior women's I mean, you're talking Jessica Haggerty, Eleni Guerra, um, and Luella and Chelsea will probably both make it on that team as well. I mean, these are studs. This is going to be a stacked class. And then can you just imagine if we bring in, you know, Jessica Espinal uh -huh. juniors, I mean, probably be best lifter by a mile at junior world. So um, <laughs> pretty exciting. I know France has some other uh, juniors as well. Maybe we'll see if Jad shows up again and what that battle, you know, uh, for best lifter could possibly be. Um, and, you know, I know they have some other good juniors. Well, Mike, what, what's your take? Well, I just think it's funny because I did not think there was a chance Jessica went to junior worlds, but Tiff's also a junior. That would be yeah. 
that if if they both decided to go to junior worlds that would just be like yeah. ridiculous like two of the best open lifters in the world just battle it out of junior worlds it would be incredible yeah and uh tiff though she did not go to junior worlds last year right she did not right who was ja the best did. Yeah. ja did and then who else uh, um uh noemi i think noemi won um no not, not noemi uh, sam sam uh, sam, sam, sam eugenie. eugenie yeah she she might have won best lifter or might have been the one of the 69s have like like a bunch of insane juniors so either her or one of the 69s i think one best left there yeah for sure all right so it'll be exciting to see if jessica does that we us could get a massive dub on the juniors um and then of course we got our studs anthony shane marcus some of these other you know zach taylor so um all right any other final thoughts you guys want before you wrap up before we close this off and sign off no nothing else all right. Well, thank you, Sam, Julia, Mike, for being here. Um, thank you, everyone, that listens to the Poverty America podcast. And that's it for today. Peace.